happy beginning of the week everyone happy monday what's up everyone how's everyone doing how you doing i lost the game today it's good to see you on another episode of mastermind academy as usual you know just I, i'm on time but uh i'm 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 still getting set up over here i'm just moving some stuff around i've been working a little bit later than usual so by the time we get started i'm still working through stuff but I have a surprise for you all. And by surprise, I mean, uh, we're back in business with a little bit of LaCroix, a little bit of LaCroix, La uh, curate, uh, pomme baya, um, sparkling apple cranberry, sparkling naturally essence water. Um, yes, we're back in business. I did make a trip to the store. I did get myself some LaCroix, you know, so that we could be hydrated throughout the entirety of the week. I know last week was rough, it was tough. So this week we had to make sure we were equipped and ready to go. What's up, Fly Lit? How you doing? Happy Monday. What's up, uh, uh, Diarrhea it is God's uh, modern wrath. Yes, I would 100% agree with you. I do think it is God's modern wrath as well. Understandable. So what's up, uh, Signing Matt? What's up, Zosam32? Good to see you. What's up, Zakar? KBB Brown, okay, B Brown, 87, how you doing? What's up, uh, WXAAZ, I don't know how to pronounce it. X's are tough for me. I'll figure those things out. What's up, Kyle Gore? Ka I, I, I know who you are. Um, I know who you are in the chat, so hello. How you doing? I don't know how to, I think that's your initials, so I'm, I don't know how to say it. What's up, uh, Vgrave75, 88 Opus, always good to see your name. What's up, Mo Defined? How you doing, Sci Sec? Mickey 171, Meow Meowks 2. Welcome, Miss Gray. How you doing? <clears throat> Chris Antoine, good to see you. What's up, Craig? Hey, Craig. What's up, uh, Boba Cat? Good to see you. IDVFX, how you doing? Kayla, I knew that. I'm sorry. Um, how you doing? I, 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 I want to ask you some stuff about, uh, about your, uh, if you're still following your 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 lifting journey during this time, I I, I was following that. I want to see where that was going. What's up, Calo? How you doing? I do think we have a shout out uh, come in now. I think someone sliced me with that. I first off, I just want to thank everyone who's uh, who's seen me struggle with computers, with the Twitch stuff, with the Discord stuff. Thank you so much for everyone who's reached out to help and who has helped me. Uh, many people have reached out to help me and I haven't allowed everyone to, um, I haven't got, even got to everyone's message. So thank you uh, for doing that, everyone who did. But I think I can do shout, a shout out. I think I can do Calo creation. I think, I think it works like that. If it doesn't work like that, there we go. Excellent, I figured it out, even though someone taught me last time. But welcome to week three. We're here, we made it. We're ready to go. So week three, you're already 25% of the way through all the stuff. I mean, you, you, you don't have that much more fighting to do. Um, and like I said, we're still in the midst of probably the most um, the most difficult hands-on concepts that we're gonna be doing uh, right now still. So a number of you have reached out to me um, working through some of your issues. I've also seen people in the chat ha um, handling you know the issues that they're running into. Hopefully we'll be able to get some of those knocked out tonight. Tonight is going to be a continuation of what we learned last time uh, with, a, with a few concepts over top of it. It's gonna be more of a lab inside of EC2. Uh, last time we kind of learned the main concepts of EC2. Tonight, we're just gonna be setting up a web server in there. Um, and so we're gonna be able to take it a little bit slower tonight. Um, you know, more hands-on, but a little bit slower. So I think you'll be able to work through it a little bit easier. I won't have to rush through uh, the things that I'm typing to kind of show you what's gonna happen, but you will be able to get uh, your web server serving uh, some web content. You'll learn a little bit about how that works, how it's working. You'll learn a little bit about um, web protocols and things as well. Um, these things are, mo most of the concepts have been taught already on EC2 that will be on the exam. Uh, these are some of the concepts you're gonna learn tonight will be on the exam, but will um, on, on the certified cloud practitioner exam, but a lot of the stuff will be to contextualize this. Uh, a Cloud Guru does the same thing. Um, I, th I thought it was a really good idea. And that's why we're gonna be building up the web servers to kind of understand what you know, uh, what a web server is. Um, yeah, and then later on this week, we'll be diving into, uh, it'll build off of the concepts that we learned in EC2. We'll learn all about load balancers and auto scaling and things like that on third or Wednesday. Um, so 
you'll see in the Google Classroom, there's not a lot of material. The reason there's not a lot of material is because I really want um, to give people this week to take the time to really focus on EC2 um, and kind of pick up those skills. And I know people, some people still haven't gotten logged in and are still having trouble with that. Um, that's fine. So, so the last week's uh last week's material is still valid for kind of the things that we're gonna be learning tonight so i want you to take you some time go through that you'll get a little bit more material on auto scaling and load balancing because that's a whole different concept even though it's going to be related because it's going to be using uh the concepts that we learned in ec2 but um yeah so not a whole lot for you to look into after that i really want you guys to really dive into the ec2 stuff but dope. Um, I didn't finish Wednesday's course yet. Do I need to do that to to get uh, to, to get half of it? No. Um, so I'm gonna manually spin up an EC2 instance today. If you have one that you already spun up uh, and it's still available to you in your account, we can go ahead and we can use that. Uh, you can use that. But I'm gonna walk through spinning one up again. I'm not gonna take as long, but uh, people can follow along doing that. We're gonna get logged in. We're gonna use a little bit of our Linux skills. We're gonna talk about the web. We're gonna. Uh, learn uh, kind of how those things work first, and then we'll immediately go in and start setting up a web server. Um, it's gonna be a pretty simple process, um, I hope. And um, yeah, it, you'll be able to set up your own web server and play around with it, you know, when we're done with it. So yeah, to be fun. I'm guessing this section will be slower version of the CICD class Saturday. Uh, no, uh, no, not really. Um, it's definitely a slower version, but like it, not quite those concepts. Um, we we did do on Saturday this past Saturday what we will be doing here. We did like we logged we made a couple different servers on Saturday, but today we're just gonna be setting up one, and we're gonna be doing it pretty slowly so that everyone can follow along. Um, so what's important to focus on tonight? We're about to get into the slides. I'm gonna share the link to the slides. But what is important tonight is that you um, that you focus on the contextualizing what we already learned with ec2 uh that we're gonna get our hands on with it um and then you're gonna start to contextualize some of the linux stuff that we would that we did so you don't need to know linux you don't need to be an expert at linux you don't even need to remember what we did last time but as we start to run the few commands that we're gonna be running just start to you know feel it out start to feel that hey this is just a computer that we are controlling using these commands rather than our mouse um and just kind of get start to get comfortable with that um, and then really focus on understanding kind of those web protocols that we're gonna be going over. So I'm gonna pull up all this stuff. But also, how was everyone's weekend? I had a, um, this is the first like pretty relaxing weekend that I had in a long time. Uh, it started off real nice with the, I don't know if anyone's a fan. Has, has anyone been watching Versus? Uh, so I did watch Luda versus Nelly. Um, which we already knew I already I already knew the outcome of what it was gonna be um but it was it was interesting but man I forgot how many amazing songs both of them had really but particularly Luda um for a while he's my favorite rapper I guess because he stepped all the way out of the rap game I kind of kind of you kind of forget about him you kind of forget about him a little bit because he he's he's kind of cemented himself in other areas but like Ooh, he was just, and he was playing chess. I think that was the bigger thing. It wasn't that he had, like, Nelly actually got has bigger songs. Like, especially when I went on to uh, uh, Spotify, like, Nelly has, like, double the streams and everything, but he doesn't have the, the catalogs. It doesn't hit the same, man. It uh, it don't hit the same, but it's all good. But it was fun. I had a good time. It was it was pretty nostalgic for me. You know, that's, I feel like they were, they were hot during my teen era. So, like, I, I, I felt it when we were playing all the songs. Okay. Let me get logged in over here. Oh, also from anyone who was, anyone who's going through pipelines, uh, you, 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 your boy be making mistakes. Um, there's a quiz for pipelines that was gonna go up Saturday. The reason it didn't go up on Saturday is because I actually accidentally made the quiz in my work, uh, at my work account, Gmail, like Google doc sheets thing. Um, and so I like, I'm, I really want to relax this weekend, so I did. Um, and so I just started moving over the questions today. Uh, so that hopefully, I probably spent some time getting it up tonight um, or by tomorrow. <clears throat> but yeah, so let's get into Academy View. What are we doing tonight? Horizons. Let's hop in. We do have slides. And let's get you all the link. right here it's got to be a way to make this simpler 
but I'll figure it out later. All right, so now you got the link. Let's share. Let's take a little bit of a sip of La Croix. Man, that um, I spilled that. That was it was more full than I expected it to be. I will also say I'm a giant child and you know, so I just spilled water on here, but I, somehow I, I've been wearing this shirt since this morning. I've eaten two and a half meals with this shirt on and somehow I didn't spill uh, food all over it, which I normally do. I purely, I buy white shirts to wear them a single time to ruin them with food and then to subsequently use them as workout shirts uh, because again, I'm a child. So I'm proud of myself. I would uh, appreciate if, you know, I just, just, I just want you to express uh, how happy I am that I made it all day before spilling on it. And then when I did spill, it was clear water. So, you know, we are, we're, we're getting better, you know? The, Life's about progress and we are progressing. All right. <clears throat> Let's do this. Oh, well, yeah, my bad. You should try your slender. Nope. Hey, I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. All right, here we go. So tonight we're doing EC2 plus plus. Now that plus plus reference, uh, if anyone is in the decoded class, we're not there yet, but in programming, um, Plus plus is a is a way to increment a number by one. So when you put plus plus at the end of it, if it was two plus plus, now it goes to three. Now we're not doing EC3 tonight, but we're doing EC2 plus one basically. This is part two of EC2. It's gonna be kind of tacking onto our knowledge that we learned and getting hands on with it. I meant to put a tagline here um, and remove that, but I didn't. So EC2 plus plus plus. The plus plus also is our plus web servers, but I didn't want to put too many pluses in there. So quick review. EC2, Elastic Compute Cloud. That is what it stands for. It is in fact an acronym. What is it? It's a size, it's a secure, resizable compute capacity in the cloud. Wow, go back. Let me move Will's face. There we go. <clears throat> capacity in the cloud. So uh, it's, it's a virtual server basically in the cloud. Uh, it's a little it's a little more granular than that, but for all intents and purposes, it's a virtual server in the cloud uh, that you can resize um, and secure it as you wish. We learned about instance types. So there are different types of instances. Uh, so there are classes of instances such as T2 or T's and M's. And we learned about uh, those different, we learned about some of the different types and there are many more I shared that in the resources, but uh, those are the classes of services. Those determine what the focus is, what, what, what you're really getting. So some things are compute optimized, so they give you more CPU and some uh, are optimized for workloads that utilize a lot of RAM. So some will give you more RAM for, uh, you know, for the same price, or some will give you access to graphics cards for uh, certain types of computing. Uh, some will give you access to faster hard drives uh, if you need more throughput for uh, whatever your workload is. So that's what the class is. It determines, you know, the 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 abilities of your server or, or you know, where your server excels uh, and then the size of it, which is a small and they're combined with a dot, small, medium, large, extra large. Uh, so T2 small would be a server or T2 large or M2 medium would be a server. So class in size. Then we learned about the pricing models. Uh, we learned that there were four pricing models. Uh, there's on demand and that's the most common ones that we're going to be using. Uh, that's what we did. We spun up an on demand instance on demand means, hey, when I'm ready for it, go ahead and give it to me. So you click, you click the stuff that you want and then AWS immediately provisions it for you. Um, yeah, that's it's, it's the most expensive of the three um, non dedicated options. So those top three, it is the most expensive option, but it is the most commonly used. Then you have reserved instances. This is uh, where you can receive a discount, sometimes a very steep discount for uh, purchasing uh, uh, compute capacity for an extended period of time. It does require a contract where it's on demand, no contract necessary. Uh, get it when you want it, get rid of it when you don't need it. Uh, and you only pay for it while it's on. You can shut it down uh, as, and you won't have to pay for it. But reserved, you say, hey, I know I want this compute instance for a year. Uh, I will prepay for it. Uh, you can uh, get a bigger discount by prepaying for the whole time. Sometimes you can only pay like three months out, six months out, and then go month to month or something. Um, they have some interesting pricing options for that. But uh, I believe it's either a one year or three year commitment. Those are your options. 
Uh, then we have spot, which is um, where you have workloads that um, it's okay if they start and stop. I um, mean, you wanna really have your workload run for the cheapest amount or I mean, yeah, most of the time it's used to get the cheapest uh, compute capacity. And it's basically works kind of like the stock market. You do a little bit of bidding um, and you set a price that you're willing to pay for compute capacity. And once the market price for compute capacity goes to whatever threshold you set, once it goes below that, they will provision you the amount of instances you said you wanted. Uh, and you will be able to use that capacity until the price goes back above it. So it's a pretty interesting pricing model there. And then dedicated hosts. Um, or if you do not want anyone else on your servers, if you want access to the entire server, uh, all these other options, you are co-located on those servers with other people, you, they're multi-tenant. So like an apartment building, they have multiple people, people inside of it. You're sectioned off just like an apartment where you all have your own, you know, full living quarters, uh, you know, and you're sectioned off. But um, some, it is possible, it's possible for uh, their workloads to affect the resources that yours receive. Um, but AWS is pretty good about it, but dedicated host means, hey, I get this whole apartment building to myself. I need the entire thing. Um, so give, so I'm willing to pay for the entire thing. Remember we said that might be good um, if you are trying, it could save you money if the software that you use is uh, paid per license. So rather than spinning up lots and lots of smaller EC2 instances where you have to pay for a software license for all of those for whatever software you have, you could use one or two dedicated instances and only pay that software license once or twice. So <clears throat> that was pricing models. So we have another page to continue, but does anyone have any questions about these things that we covered last time? Feel free to ask away. Like I said, tonight, I'm pretty confident we have a little bit more time. I've actually gone back through uh, all of the courses because everyone's, uh, last week, literally everyone's course had too much stuff in it for the time limit. So um, I think we're gonna be good today. On on demand, I'm not sure if that's a question. Not sure what you mean, uh, but what can I do if I can't create an access key? Um. What do you mean you can't create an access key? So as a car, an a do you mean like an, uh, a, an access key and secret key for your IAM user to log into AWS or to authenticate via the command line? Or do you mean a um, an SSH key to log into your EC2 instance? I think that's what you mean. I think you mean an SSH key to log into your instance. Um, yeah. T2 micros are in the free tier, it might be some more, but yes, T2 micros are the ones that we're gonna be using. So you already have an EC2 instance. Um, access key, so why can't you, so you're good with IAM, but you need an access key to get an IAM. We'll go on there in a second, uh, and maybe we can answer your question. Oh, with SSH, so if you already have the instance and you did not, and you did not download the access key, if you did not download the access key, you might as well go ahead and abandon that server and just right click it and terminate it. Uh, Cause there's no way to get it if you didn't already download it. Uh, so you have to spin up a new instance and well, there are, there's a, there's a way to get into that instance, but it's complicated. The best option is for you to spin up a new one and make sure you click that download button at the end once you get to it. Oh uh, yes, that's actually a pretty good point that I didn't bring up. Uh, Frequency Hop says T2 and T3 has a uh, burstable. So burstable is, is is in terms of CPU. So over time, um, the, the T instances, the ones that we're gonna be using have something called burstable uh, CPU. So what that means is you have an allotted amount of CPU power, but uh, over time you can build up uh, burst credits. Uh, so, you know, if you're not utilizing a ton of stuff, they wanna encourage you to not, you know, be running at 100% at all times um, so that they can share stuff around, but it'll allow you to, if a workload comes along and you need more power than you have access to, it'll allow you to go above your CPU threshold for a period of time, uh, as long as you have credits available to you. So it's pretty cool. Um, it, it, it'll keep your server from, you know, um, failing if, you know, some some process begins to take up a lot of uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of resources, but it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Why isn't there a type that gives you more power when you need it and only kicks when you, yes, Jess Machine, that is, that is it. Um, that is it. And so that's also a great question, Jess Machine. You are, you are pre preemptively asking the question uh, for, for 
Wednesday. So that is what auto scaling. Um, I think I think what you're that the paradigm in which you're asking your question uh, really revolves around auto scaling and scaling period. Uh, so there are paradigms. The reason they don't they don't they don't give you a type of server for that is because there's an entire uh, ecosystem of services set up to solve that problem. So great. Excellent question. I love how you're thinking. Excellent question. Oh, yeah, Keylive TV. Yeah, people are already hopping in. Exactly. There we go. Okay. I downloaded my PIM. Is that what I'm supposed to use to do it? Yes. Yeah, so the PIM is, is what you need. That .pem file is what you're going to be using to get into the server. All right. Let's go to the next. Let's go to continue. Just the last couple pieces that we went over. Uh, we talked about EC2 storage a little bit. So EC2, although it's, you know, it's a virtual private server, so it has all the pieces. It's got the CPU, the RAM, and the storage, um, and it can have other things as well, like uh, graphics cards to do compute stuff if you need it. But the type of storage that you have are one instant stores. So instant stores um, are what come with the, they come with the EC2 instance. The problem is, uh, not problem, but they are, um, they are ephemeral uh, pieces of storage. So they, 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 don't stick around uh, there. There's no way for you to take backups of them or snapshotting snapshot them uh, They come with the instance as is. And when you remove the instance, they kind of go away. When you shut the instance down, they disappear. Uh, so you can lose data. So it's problematic. That's not where you want to put things. If you want to, uh, you don't want to use those. If you need to keep some stuff around the most common piece of storage that backs EC2 are these uh, is EBS, the elastic block store. This is, this is what most people use. Why do people use it? Um, they use it because it is uh, it has great snapshotting features. So amazing backup features, really cheap, uh, pretty reliable. And the other one is that you can detach it from one instance and put it on another one. So you can use it to move things around. Um, it's, it's a little bit safer. It stays around when an instance is shut down or it can stay around when an instance is shut down. I don't think it does by default, but it, uh, it can. I think they, they tell you that when you shut one down, um, but yeah, EBS, Elastic Block Store, this is the file system uh, that you're mostly going to want to use. Then we learned that uh, to log into a Linux server inside of AWS, um, a Linux EC2 instance, uh, there is no password login. You have to use uh, key-based authentication. And we said we had to use SSH keys to log in with that. And we've already had some questions about that tonight, so I will run through that again. Uh, but yes, you must use uh, an SSH key. It's a .pem file uh, to authenticate with your server. Uh, basically, you know, SSH uh, key-based authentication is basically um, your uh, a, a a key and a lock file are basically generated. So two files are basically generated um, that work together, and you put one on the server, and you keep one, and you know, Amazon handles that for you, but um, that's kind of how it works. And as long as you, when you try to connect, you have that file um, when you're connecting, as long as they match up and say, hey, can I open up the lock? Yes, I can. It, it will allow you to get in. Uh, so no password login there. And then we talked a little bit about security groups, uh, very lightly. We're gonna talk more about security groups tonight, but security group is simply a, a it's a virtual firewall for Amazon that allows you to uh, control what type of traffic is allowed to both travel into and out of your EC2 instances. So quick review, any questions about all of that? All right. Um, is there an important difference between volatile and ephemeral? Yes. Uh, volatile, um, is in reference to things that, um, well, uh, it's possible. So, so even things like Docker containers are ephemeral. Uh, volatile generally means that um, the data w can be uh, can be lost easier with things like uh, power outages or or, or power or, or cuts in power and things like that. Uh, ephemeral. Uh, I'm pretty sure ephemeral means it's just not supposed to stick around for a long time, but I think it can. So, like, um, let's let's look at the real meaning last for a very short time, um, like volatile. Um, let's, let's pull that up too. I think ephemeral is more so in its intention, uh, not, n not necessarily in its, uh, in its actuality. So easily evaporated at normal tension pressures. That's not, uh, liable to change rapidly or unpredictably. And I think that's the problem here. Ephemeral necessarily isn't unpredictable, um, or, or, or can be lost like that. 
um but uh but things that are volatile are but ephemeral is just not meant to last for long periods of time so uh theoretically your instant store could even though it's ephemeral it could last for forever if you kept that instance up and kind of just left it alone uh that affirm that that storage it could last years as long as your instance was up uh but it's not designed to uh it's not it's, it's the storage that's not designed to last for a long time but yes we're talking about ram when we say volatile uh when we describe ram as volatile um and we describe some of these other things as ephemeral um i guess i guess i'm a mm, but I, 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 I don't know. I, I feel like things that are volatile do not like it's, they don't have to be ephemeral. Um, they could last for a long time. I don't know. I don't know. If you set up billing alerts and set your uh, amount to one cent. Yes, we will set up, we can set up billing alerts tonight. Um, for sure. We'll have time for that. Can you back up your data by yourself and not use either one? Yes, you absolutely can. But uh, it's gonna be a little bit it's gonna be harder um they provide you really easy ways to do it um there are, i mean yes you can back up your data however you'd like um but all of them are going to require you to do some magic um if you want to copy full file systems if you just want to copy your files sure there are ways um, a lot of people push them to s3 we don't know what s3 is yet but a lot of people just do that um if they're just files you care about they still charge you for resources when stop no they do not uh, they do not hear. So they charge you for a boba cat. If it, boba, boba, boba cat. I'm, I'm never gonna get that. But if your instance is stopped, they no longer charge you for the most expensive piece, which is the compute capacity. That's what they're charging for. Uh, so it won't count towards your hours. They will charge you for the amount of data that is in your EBS volume. Um, but again, that is pretty darn cheap as well. And we haven't done anything. So uh, you won't really do anything, but um, they will charge you for that. Um, so what are we supposed to be learning today? We are going to be uh, building a web server on top of EC2. So a lot of people who have taken this have not done something like that. Where it's, it, yeah, we're going to be putting our Linux skills to the test a little bit and putting our EC2 skills to the test a little bit and diving a little deeper. Uh, we're going to be learning about cider blocks and all kinds of other stuff as well. Should our instances be running when we aren't using them? Um, I would shut them down. I, I would stop them. I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. Um, I would stop them just to save yourself some hours, um, unless you need to access the things that are on there. Uh, yes, there are, there are tracks. Yes, there are. Um, we will be going over, uh, alerting and logging metrics and things like that a little bit later. Boba cat. Cool. I'm cool with that. Boba T cat. Oh, I, okay. Either I, I, which, whichever one you want, I can do Boba T cat. Now that I know instead of saying Boba cat and feeling dumb. 85% of my cloud usage, even though I terminated my instance. That's interesting. I'll be interested to see that email. Okay, here we go. Let's, uh, let's, let's keep moving. That's the review. Um, yeah. And tonight's topic should be relatively chill. So the first topic in which we're going to cover, and we, these are, these are also kind of review. There's just things that we touched on as we were spinning up our instance. Um, but did not dive into. So the first one is an AMI. And so I'm going to, I'm going to start putting just the, uh, at the top of the slide, I'm going to start putting just the acronym because it's important that you learn these because they're going to ask you like on the test, like what is an AMI rather than what is an Amazon machine image. So you need to be familiar with the, uh, with the acronyms, but it is an Amazon machine image. It is a read only file system image that includes an operating system. Uh, like Linux, Windows, uh, or Unix, um, and any additional software required to deliver a service or portion of it. Okay, a lot of words there to just say that it is a it is an image, um, just like if you were to uh, install Windows, a fresh copy of Windows on your computer, or whenever you need to a factory restore your Mac, it, it it downloads a giant file, it downloads a giant uh, ISO file from the internet, and it re it reformats those things. It is a um, yeah, it's a disk image of uh, of of a file system. So 
it's not all that special well mis are they act a little bit differently but that's how you can think of them um and so the the interesting thing is that they don't uh they're not just the operating system you can have them include applications and things as well so you can uh basically say hey all right i'm going to install linux real quick and i'm going to install a, these tools on top and then i can generate an amazon machine image from that that has all the tools and things that i need all the applications that i need um, and then every time I want to spin up a new EC2 instance, I can use that image and the, the, the server that spins up will have all the things that I already need. It's the base uh, underlying operating system and tools and files and software that, uh, that you want to run. Uh, and again, you can create those manually. Um, and anyway, we talked about it a little bit and actually I think it might be good to go right into the console to contextualize it a little bit. Let's get logged in. And we'll go in EC2. You don't need, you don't need to do this. I'm just showing you um, where those uh, where the MIs were that we were looking at Northern VA. And we went to launch a new instance. That's too big. Um, they give you some options here for you know Amazon Linux or Red Hat or OpenSUSE or Ubuntu or Ubuntu. On some other and some other options, Windows Server. These are AMIs. So these are machine images. The way that uh, you're using these is they're basically booted off of this image. It's booted off of an image of Ubuntu. Um, and again, you can take this and I could spin up a server with this. I could install a bunch of software on it and I could create another image basically uh, like based on this one uh, that has a lot of other stuff included. And then I could use that to, to boot off of. And so where you would see that is you'd see that over here under my AMIs. And so if you had any of your own, you could select that to, to boot your things off of. So uh, it is possible for you to get a different underlying uh, kind of host system if you need it. So that's the Amazon machine image. Does anyone have any questions um, about, about that? So much. So an ISO for server, yes. So like an ISO for server, it's, ex it's basically exactly that. Uh, in reality, it's actually an ISO and some other metadata and some weird stuff they have going on in the background, but essentially it is an ISO for a server, 100%. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Are we gonna be able to follow this course without using the CLI? Yes, uh, yes. None of the, so on the cloud practice, this is designed around the cloud practitioner cert. Uh, none of, I don't think any CLI stuff besides knowing that you can use it and to use it, you have to have your uh, access key and secret key set up. I don't think anything is on there about that, um, uh, you know, about the uh, CLI, but we are gonna do a number of things with the CLI just for your complete knowledge. Uh, we're not only teaching to the test. I thought AMIs were protected against being cloned. Um, so yes, they, they are they are protected against being um, I don't want to call it protected against being di directly um, cloned, but uh, you can always take a backup. Uh, you can take a you can take a snapshot of your instance, um, and you can always make a an, an AMI out of that um, your own personal AMI out of the out of the snapshotted EBS volume. You're doing it via the session tool on the console. I'm not sure what that means. Why would you choose one AMI over the other? Oh, great question. Um, and then you choose a different one for each server that you use. Uh, generally, you're gonna use the same AMI for most, depending on what your server type is. So maybe your, your company has a, a bunch of web servers. So those would all generally contain the exact same, they would all be based over the same AMI, the same Amazon machine image. But maybe you have uh, you have a web server, but then maybe you also have a, a, an API server or something. And maybe those are based off of a different image. 
uh, the way that you choose is first uh, um, seeing what requirements uh, your your organization has. So some organizations will tell you what you have to use. Uh, some of them will say, hey, this needs to be based off, this needs to be Red Hat based, or it needs to be Amazon Linux based or Ubuntu based for any of these number of reasons. Um, uh, some will give you some type of special secure image uh, that happens a lot of places you have to build your own. So like, um, like we where, where I work, we we don't use any of the we use one that's publicly well, kind of publicly available. We use one from the Center for Information Security. Uh, it's called the CIS Benchmark. Um, it's, it's a Red Hat based one um, that we use that has a number of hardening features included in it. Uh, but a lot of places make you build your own um, for safety reasons. Um, and so it's you know, it comes down to uh, requirements first and then after requirements, you know, is if, if a company says it doesn't really matter which one, the choice is kind of up to you as or the systems administrator, whoever's spinning these up, which with everyone they're comfortable with um, to use. But yeah, it's just operating system choice. Mm -hmm. Your buddy running GUI Linux EC2. I appreciate that view developer. I appreciate that. But you should still use AWS. Um, especially as a view developer and i'm assuming you don't mean view like the the uh the framework because you didn't spell it with that but you know i assume you're making some type of uh, thing you can see oh you do mean you do mean vue.js so cool you yeah you should start using amazon you should start using aws it's uh i feel like it's good for everybody right now am i getting this right or ami is the os of your server so yes uh, yes, you are getting that right. Just machine. It is the uh, it is the OS of your server, but it can be the OS of your server plus uh, some other things that you can also have like again software installed and things like that. But yes, you are correct. Essentially, it is the operating system of your server. Uh, it's going to be the base image your server is based off of. So yes, the operating system. Mm -hmm. Perfect, Elon. There we go. I'm coming through with the yes. It is a snap. It's a it's a snapshot of the thing that you want, so that you can make copies of it. So yes, it's the thing that you can use to basically make copies of the server that you currently have. <laughs> ah, that's fair. View view developer definitely seems like it would already be taken. That makes sense. Okay, so that is an AMI. Let's go to the next one here. Next thing is resource tagging. Uh, and this is more of a, as people are working towards there, I don't think there's anything um, about this on the cloud practitioner exam, but for anyone trying to go farther, especially solutions architect, resource tagging is pretty important. Uh, well, it's it, it can be very useful. So you can add metadata, which is just, uh, just text information uh, to instances called tags, which you can, uh, which can be used to make management of your instances easier. So what do we mean by management of our instances? And what do we mean by tags? So when you're spinning up a new instance, you get over to the fifth step over here. And so let's just go over there. I'm just gonna keep clicking next. Um, and you get over to tags. And so again, tags are just a uh, little bits of data that help you identify this service. Um, and so when I add a tag of something like name and I call it like test server or something, I can give it a name, but I could also give it something like maybe my company is has lots of environments. Maybe I have a developer environment for people to do development in and uh, a, a staging environment for like things to go to right before they go out to production. And then maybe I have a production environment. So you can also tag things with things like environment, um, really any key that you want. Um, and I can name you know this one like development or any information that I wanted to um, to describe the server. And so I can use this information later to basically query for this, this server or identify the server. So maybe I was writing a script and that was only supposed to update, you know, things in the development environment. I could use this tag here and I could look for anything that was tagged as environment equals development. And I could only apply things to, to these servers. So it's just a way for you to more easily manage um, things inside AWS. Yes, department is a common one as well. So sometimes people will, you know, tag it by department or whatever and call it like, you know, marketing department. These are the marketing department servers, uh, but it could really be literally anything you want, any key value, any, any key and any value you want. Um, there are some that Amazon has set to the side that will actually do things. So like the name one with a capital N will actually set this 
who actually set the name on this page. So the way that you get the name to auto populate here, uh, you can set you can set it there, but you can also just change these at any time. Cause again, this isn't a hard set thing. This is just metadata. It's just a little bit of information about the server. It doesn't really do much. It just allows you to easily, more easily find it to more easily manage these things as well. So uh, tagging, Fairly, you know, fairly simple. Nothing, nothing super crazy. Uh, just allows you to identify, you know, identify the server easier if you need to. And you can kind of see that if you go to, these are all off in the off state. So I don't know if they're gonna show up. Um, let's see. Describe, I can't type. We're gonna get a bunch, but um, I'm gonna try to show you. Oops, it isn't. This is not like my scroll wheel at all. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. I don't have JQ installed on here. I would use it to get the tags. I want. Okay, so see, this is JSON. I know it's hard to read. I'm not expecting you to read it, uh, but because I gave this, um, I gave a server. Um, that we created on Saturday. I gave it the name pipeline startup. So again, if I was gonna go do something from the command line, I can actually um, I can actually look for this tag specifically and I could pull out all servers that were tagged this to be able to perform batch functions against them or do whatever I wanted. So just uh, again, just a little bit of data that all gets populated inside of here. Okay, security groups. Oh, actually, let me let me answer any questions about tagging. I'm sorry. Can you access easier through the CLI with tagging? Yes. Um. Well, easier. Yeah. Uh. Yes. Um. But there's a there's even another level of like. There's a, there's a whole like uh, I guess skill set of parsing JSON through the CLI, which takes a little bit of uh I don't know uh, a little bit of work. So you can you can query it through the CLI itself. So I think I can do um, probably I don't I don't use EC2 instances that much anymore, but I think you can do uh, like ID or like, let me see. I think you can do like tags equals something and pull those up. Oops. Oh, filters. Yeah. So dash dash filters and I can do like dash dash filters tags equals whatever, um, or I could use some type of uh, JSON querying tool to be able to find to get that information out. It is um, it's a little bit easier to do again when you're trying to do something programmatically um, to like filter that out to the CLI, I think. Uh, what is AWS pricing like um, versus GCP? Yeah, I haven't I haven't done a ton with GCP uh, cheaper. I think it depends on what you're trying to do, at least from what I've seen so far. Um, I, yeah, I, I think they're fairly comparable, um, a fairly comparable price-wise. Um, I actually find Google or GCP to be a bit, um, in their attempt to make it user-friendly, I actually find it to be a little more complicated, um, to be honest. But uh, that might just be because of my familiarity with AWS. But pressing-wise, so far, from uh, like I had a I had a compute instance in Google. Um, that I assume was a comparable tier to the one that I was using in AWS and it costs I think they were within two dollars of each other after running it for the entire month. So uh, But I'm sure I'm sure the different services vary uh, relatively wildly to be honest, so And there's also like so many strategies to you know managing your AWS costs that like cheaper is a, a pretty tough one to to figure out like to, to, to calculate to be honest can get pretty tough. All right, so security groups, and we talked about security groups being this virtual firewall, but specifically port is what we're talking about. Um, specifically port. So, and TCP, IP, and UDP networks. Don't sweat knowing what TCP, IP, and UDP are right now. Um, but uh, I want you to understand the concept of a port. A port is an endpoint to a logical uh, connection. Um, and the way a client program specifies a specific server program on a computer and a network. So lots, lots of words there. 
all a port is right now the way that i want you to think about a port is a numbered endpoint for a service to to deliver information through and for another computer to connect to it so i might be running a program uh, over port 40 and you know it, only one program can be working over a port at a time can consume a port at a time and for someone to get the information they would need from this specific program they would need to connect to my computer over port 40 to get that information so <clears throat> it's not um i don't want you to worry about this i don't want you to worry about lo logical versus physical connection um th that's that's not important right now a port is just a it's an endpoint to communicate and they're numbered endpoints we're gonna talk about some of the common ones tonight but that's what I want you to know. The reason why we need to know this is because security groups, and I think we looked at them a bit, they, uh, the way that you manage your, your traffic, you manage the input and output of the server is in fact uh, using uh, those services and using those ports. So this is the first instance that we spun up. And I'm just gonna go down a little bit and click on security groups. So we're gonna take a look really quick at the security group for, that we have created already. Um, it creates it by default, so we didn't do anything manually. We have two options here. We have inbound rules and outbound rules. So again, we can we can control the traffic that's coming into our server. That's the inbound rules coming into our server and then outbound rules are, is, are things going out of our server. So we can control all that. So inbound rules, we look at, if we look at one, we only have a single one and it's for SSH. So we, we, we've heard of SSH. We, uh, you know, if you didn't remember what it was, you know, that's the thing that we're, that's the, that's the protocol. That's the tool that we're using to log into a Linux computer. Uh, but the, look at this port range right here. And I think this is what's uh, most important right here. Um, the way that security groups work are via ports. So you have to know what port to open or close. And I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk, we're gonna talk about how to find those ports and know what those ports are. But, um, SSH commonly runs over port 22. It can be changed, but pretty much, you know, commonly by default, port 22 is the port for SSH. And so it says inbound, um, port 22 is, is here and we have a rule for it. And we're basically saying 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 can get in. This is just uh, an IP address to describe everyone's IP address. So this says literally anyone can log into the server or, or has, you know, access through the firewall to log in to port 22. Um, and we're gonna, we're, again, we're gonna see this in action. We're gonna change some things in a little bit. And we're also about to talk about what, like why these zeros are here and like what this notation is, but ports are just the, you know, they're the gateways. They are the gateway that a service listens on. So SSH on a server is, uh, it's only listening on a single port. Um, and it's listening over port 22. And it's the only thing that like once it's running on port 22, only one thing can be in a port at a time. Only one thing can be consuming a port at a time. And for me to, for me to try to SSH into a computer, if I tried to SSH into a different port besides 22, even if SSH was up and running, uh, it would fail because again, I have to be communicating with it over that port. Okay. Um, the number, we'll leave the screen up. This is perfect because now we're gonna go right over to CIDR ranges. Big words, but don't be scared of this. Uh, you, this is a networking term, but uh, CIDR stands for classless interdomain routing. Don't, you don't need to remember that. I never remember that. I look it up every single time we go over it because I never remember what it stands for. You don't need to remember what it stands for unless you're trying to be a networking engineer in which you probably already know what it stands for. Don't sweat that at all. Um, I would remember the term CIDR, C-I-D-R, um, because it's commonly used. You will have to talk about it, uh, especially when we get to the VPC portions and subnetting and all that stuff. But um, uh, it's a method for allocating IP addresses um, and for IP routing. So one, what are IP addresses? IP addresses are simply the, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a set of numbers. It's, it's a, I think they're called octets, it's a set of a couple octets. Um, it's, it's a set of numbers that's used to identify the networked location of a computer. So just like your street address, it is very similar to your street address. Your street is, you, you know, your house is at 247 uh, Happy People Lane or something. Uh, this number is the same way. It only exists in one place. Well, it only exists in, in one place. There's only one location for these, for these numbers. Um, 
and that's how computers that's how computers over a network find each other um and so uh this the side arrange is a, is a way uh for uh, it's a method for both allocating those ip addresses so giving them out to devices and things as well as uh being able to route traffic amongst them uh, right now the only thing i want you to know about them is that it's also a way to classify um uh ranges of ip addresses so what you're looking at here um whoops what you're looking at on th this screen over here is a cider range so um it's, it can be a little confusing it can be very confusing actually um and it has to do with with bits which you guys haven't learned about um um but basically it 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 <laughs> Each of these, each of these numbers right here, each of these zeros can go up to 255. So anyone in decoded, we learned about bits. We learned that a bit, um, that a bit can represent, uh, a byte actually, a byte can represent uh, 256 numbers from zero to 255. So each of these is a byte. So this can go from zero to 255. 255 is the highest number each of these can be. So it can go from, 0.0.0.0 to it can be 1.0.0.0 1.1.0 it, so it can just it can go each of these numbers can move independently all the way up to 255 um and so the the side arranges uh again it's it's a calculation of bits and bytes so this this uh kind of i like to describe it as a modifier uh when i'm first teaching this to people but it'll describe to you once you understand uh those bits and bytes on how many numbers it describes so if i want to allocate a range of you know a, a certain if i want to allocate 30 ip addresses or a thousand ip addresses or something um you can use this notation to allocate a specific amount of them you don't need to know how to do it i just need you to know that when we're when you see this um you have to put in the source ip address as a cider block it can be super annoying the only th other thing i want you to know is 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 is all so i'll write that down that means every single ip address that means it's wide open or 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 that it you know references every ip address and then i want you to know that if you want to do a single ip address it, it, there's a slash 32 at the end so um i'm not gonna look up my ip address but maybe even though it's probably on the screen somewhere to be honest but let's say we wanted to allow one person into one of our servers and let's say their ip address was this and we're gonna go over this a little bit later because we're actually gonna do it but let's say we wanted to allow this ip address into one of our servers uh the way that we would represent that is with a slash 32 so 0.0.0.0 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 slash 0 is everything but a single ip address looks like this i know it's confusing i know i i i certainly i certainly understand but do not get hung up on cider blocks again just just know when you see that it is referencing either uh it's, it's referencing one or more IP addresses. That's all. I think that's what I want you to know that that's what it's referencing. Uh, there are calculators and tools to help you figure out which ones tonight. None of that's going to matter. We're not doing any special calculations. We're using this one always tonight. Um, but if you want to mess around with it later, um, I think it helps people if you just know these two to start off. And then you're probably going to need to spend some time learning a little bit more about cider blocks, cider ranges, and how to calculate them properly. But don't sweat it. So that's all that is. Any questions about that? How many bits are in an octet? Great question. Eight, because eight. eight is a byte. How many? Uh, how many? Uh, how many nibbles is a byte? If anyone from decoders on here, hope you've been studying. How many nibbles is, are in a byte? Just two. They're just two. A nibble is four bytes. And there are two. Uh, yeah, nibble is four bits. Sorry, a nibble is four bits. So there are two of those in a byte. Let's see. I just set up SSH about an hour ago with Ubuntu. If I switch users, will I be able to get back to Ubuntu at IP? Um, great question, Hustle Marsalis. Do you mean if you switch users on your local computer? If you switch users on your local computer, uh, yes, yeah, so you will be able to, as long as you still have access to the key. 
if you switch users, you may not have access to the key anymore. Um, just so you know, if you mean, I I'm assuming that means on your local computer, if you mean you switch users on the server, um, yes, you still will be able to, that, that won't matter at all. Okay, here we go. Let's, uh, yeah, I think that's all the, that's all the EC2 stuff we need. Like we've, we've now knocked out all the EC2 concepts. So basically like if you're, if you're trying to go back and figure out like what you need to know in EC2, uh, basically it's going to be this review, the review that you see here and these three slides all the way up to security groups. Those are like the main concepts. Like again, it's not every little uh, in-depth piece, but those are the major concepts of EC2, which will, uh, which will cover a majority of what you're going to be doing. Um, and again, there's a little, there's caveats and there's a little, little things inside of each of these things that are important uh, for later. But like right now, that is, that's like all the things that EC2 has to offer. EC2 is such an interesting one because it's got so many pieces because it's, it's, it's a full computer. The other services Amazon is offering you is not, are not basically a full computer that you're managing. They're, they're, they're software that's utilizing computers underneath, but uh, it's, it's very specific to the service you're providing. Whereas EC2 is kind of, um, let's put it like this. Everything that you can do with all of Amazon's other services, you can build yourself on EC2. And I think that's why it can be the most complicated. Um, because again, every service they have, every single service they have, you could build yourself uh, and you can install the tools and build the programs yourself and put it on the EC2 instance and not need their services. Uh, so that is like, when you have that much freedom, uh, that means you're gonna, you know, have to learn a little bit more. I have EC2 instances on AWS. Is there anything I can do to improve latency between them? Good question, Nuglehead. Uh, they're both in the same region. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, are you are you saying network latency is the problem? Um, and I know they're in the same region. Are they in the same availability zone? Um, that will probably be your first, uh, your quickest way to improve latency. If latency matters that much, uh, is to put them is to get them set to the same AZ. Put them in the same. AZ, that'll put them closer together um, in, in the same network, to be honest. Um, but we can talk about that some more. Um, that's, that's an interesting question. I like that. And these are the types of questions you end up having to answer, you know, as you're, as you're solving problems, you'll set something up in the cloud for a company and everything will be going great. And you'll realize, hey, everything's set up right, but we've got a lot of latency between these two servers. Let's figure out why we have this much latency um, between them. Mind if I link a website to anyone? Yeah, yeah, link. I'm down for anyone to link websites. I think I made Nightbot uh, less restrictive, so it should it should allow you to post it, no problem. I'm cool with links. Uh, if it's a wild link, I'll just delete it. Like, at, at the end of the day, I'm not trying to protect you all from uh, from all the crazy people on the internet. You guys are on here. You know, there are, people are wild. We'll delete stuff when, when it comes across and it's, it's ridiculous. Other than that, like, yeah, we'll be all right. Everyone will survive. Uh, could you set that all PCs from a certain network, like all PCs from your work can have Wi-Fi, uh, work Wi-Fi can have access. Yes. Yes. Jets machine yeah. right on the questions that you're asked in Jets machine, uh, are telling me that you are thinking through, um, applying, applying these concepts. And it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, again, that's not to say that everyone should be, is going to have the same context to do the same. Um, but yes, if uh, like if you only wanted people from your office to be able to access an EC2 instance, you could find out what the CIDR range uh, is for the IP addresses that exist with the side of your office, and you could plug that in, and only people from your office could access it. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Oh yeah, or if it's or if it's just a public IP that's coming out of the building, which it probably is, you can just do that. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Is availability zone the same as subnet? Uh, no, it's not the same as subnet. Um, it's not the same su as a as subnet in general concepts, but uh, possibly with the way that a lot of people think of subnetting, um, if they were if they were in the same AZ, uh, they should be able to actually even if they're not in the same AZ, they should be able to. Uh, depending on how you have your stuff set up, they may be able to subnet together. They can be in different AZs and can be kind of subnetted together. 
Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what subnet is, we're gonna talk about it later, but subnet is a sub network. So like it's a, it's kind of a, a another network underneath the, the kind of main network. Um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get deeper into that. You've been through Amazon on your own uh, as, a, as a private network, use a subnetting, spread a signal addresses across a network. Yes, yeah, yes, there we go. Perfect, you said it right for me. Um, but uh, AZ is gonna be, so um, if you wanna see if they're in the same AZ, uh, check out the instance and go, like click on one of them and scroll down a little bit and go to, they switch this up all the time. Uh, on the right side, there'll be availability zone and it's gonna be either like A, B or C or D, uh, depending on where you have it. Uh, make sure they're this, make sure they're the same place. If not, you can kind of move one over there. Do all the IP addresses need to match up from all IAM users and groups? Like multiple people are working on a, on one project. So, do all IP addresses need to match up? So um, they're they're completely separate. So like the IP address and the IAM user is like completely different. Um, so I, I'm not sure. I mean, can you try asking that a different way? Um, I'm not sure I understand uh, what they what they would need to match up with. So try asking that another way. I'll see if I can answer. Okay. Now let's dive into web servers. Oh, we're, we're making excellent time. This is gonna be, what is it? It's gonna be so chill. We're gonna get into this hands-on demo and we're gonna be able to just nice ease our way through it. Um, and it won't be so stressful. So tonight we're gonna learn about web servers a little bit uh, because EC2 instances are commonly used as web servers. And this is kind of the, 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 the quickest way to show people, because usually people who are studying for this certificate uh, kind of don't have the background in this um, and have not seen uh, what it takes to deliver data from a computer out into the internet. So we're gonna learn a little bit about that now. Lots of words here. These, this is a copy and paste job from the Nginx website. We're gonna read through it real quick. Just uh, gonna read through it because it's got some good information in here and then we're gonna break it down. All right, so a web server stores and delivers the content for a website such as text, images, video, and application data. So everything you're seeing right now through your screen or like and around your screen is basically what a web server does. The, the way that you're getting this info uh, right now is through web server is, is transmitting text um, through chat and everything else, uh, images, uh, video and application data um, to clients that request it. So the term client is um, is generally a term, it's a term used for anyone request, the, any computer requesting information. So your computer or your phone or your, uh, or your tablet or whatever is the client and it's requesting data from a server usually. Uh, there, uh, there are more hierarchies in the way that that happens, but uh, keeping it real simple, the server has the information, the the thing that's requesting the data is the client, your computer is the client. Um, so yeah, so all the web server does is deliver things such as text, images, video, and application data to your computer. The most common type of client is web browser program, which requests data from your website when a user clicks on a link or downloads a document on a page displayed in the browser. So something you're all familiar with uh, using the internet. Um, you know, the most common type of client is a web browser. That's your own, the web browser on your computer is a client because it requests data from uh, these websites, from these servers to get information such as documents and things to be displayed in the browser. Here's where things get pretty important. A web server communicates with a web browser so web browser being your Google Chrome, being your Firefox, being, uh, what's it called in, uh, what's the Mac OS, Safari, Internet Explorer, which no one should be using anymore, or Edge. Microsoft's Edge is uh, pretty good because they've gone Chromium based. I'm impressed with it, to be honest, even though I don't use it. Uh, you should check it out. Internet Explorer is pretty trash. The mo probably the most trash product of the 21st century, 20 whenever it came out, even the newest one, 20th century, 21st century combined, pretty awful product. Um, but Edge is pretty good. But 
for a web server that we're gonna create tonight to communicate with a web browser, which is the, the client that sits on your computer, your Chrome, all that stuff, is using, it, it does that using Hypertext Transfer Protocol, HTTP. Important, this is, this is important. Uh, not necessarily should you memorize what it's called, um, try to, I highly encourage you to try to, but definitely remember this acronym if you can. Um, HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's, I hate, I despise when they make acronyms and it's got four letters like this capitalized, but there's only three ones here. Obviously the text here is the other T, Hypertext is the HT Transfer Protocol. Really dumb, it bothers me. Just for uh, consistency's sake, I feel like they should just capitalize the T in the word right here. But hey, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. This is the this is the protocol that's used to connect uh, to transfer data over the web or transfer web data. The content of most web pages is encoded in Hypertext Markup Language, so HTML. That's probably something a lot of you have heard of, um, but may not know what it is but the content of most web pages is encoded in hypertext markup language. Uh, and so HTML is uh, just kind of the structure of a web page. It's kind of the, the structure and the layout of a web page, um, kind of like the scaffolding or the skeleton of a web page and kind of how it's formatted and laid out. Um, and that is how most websites, um, if not all websites are, are encoded. Um, the content can be static. So for example, text and images. So if I just went to a web page, like my page, uh, academy.mastermind.io is actually a static website. It's just text and images on there. Um, but it can also be dynamic. Um, and so for example, when you go to a website and you're putting stuff in your cart and it's calculating the price, um, you know, that you, of, of things that you're adding to your cart and it's, it's dynamically updating, that's a dynamic site where the where it's, it's doing uh, calculations and it's doing, um, it's, it's making requests, it's doing a lot of other, uh, a lot of other things besides just serving you images and text. Um, so yeah, so it can be static or dynamic. Those are the two options that you have. Uh, to deliver dynamic content, most web servers support server side scripting languages to encode business logic into the communication. Lots of words to say, just there's a lot of words there just to say basically that you can use programming languages, um, uh, web servers support programming languages to uh, make these dynamic sites and to do uh, calculations and business logic on the server side of things. So things such as ASP, um, JavaScript, uh, which is the language of the web, uh, PHP, Python and Ruby. Again, just about every language can be used to do things on the server to be able to, uh, that web server support. So um, yeah, web servers are just tools that deliver information over over the web, um, specifically over the HTTP protocol um, or HTTPS. We're gonna be talking about that in a little bit, but yes, a lot of, lot of information there, a whole lot of information there. Any questions so far about what a web server is or does? Luckily, the name is the name of a web server is fairly uh, it's fairly self-explanatory. It serves web information. It serves it serves web uh, content. It communicates web data. Oh, coding to include IE is it's Aaron Dev. Aaron, uh, I so uh, I work I work on a project for the government and. Uh, the government absolutely still uses IE 11. Um, and I can't tell you how many times we have to, we're like, people are like, there's a bug, like there's a big problem going on. And then we'll, it'll be like, we'll be looking like, I can't replicate, can't, like, I can't replicate this. And it'll come back and it's, as an IE issue because only people internal to the government are seeing this as a problem. The rest of the world who cares about this information is not. Um, and we have no way to replicate it because none of us have IE on our computers because no one should have IE on their computers. Even if you have a Windows computer, get rid, delete the icon, stop it from booting. It's so bad. It's really bad. It's, it's, uh, it's really bad. But that's why I like Microsoft's. I'm glad that Microsoft is like humble enough to be like, all right, our crap sucks. Let's abandon it and do this whole new thing. Like, yeah, they definitely could have gone about it a better way, but like, Respect, a respect for them, for them a lot, like seeing that Chrome and Chromium and, you know, was a better, a better option. Um, not that I necessarily think 
I, I, have my, I have my gripes with Chrome and Chromium as well. But I mean, right now it's, it's the best we got. It's what we got right now. And I, I, I commend them for taking a step in what I consider to be the right direction. I'm, I've been, yes, Hugo C, I, I mean, Hugo C, I, there, the past two years, super impressed, uh, super impressed with Microsoft's movements. Um, it's pretty, it's definitely pretty impressive. Like, really, like I'm telling y'all, these, everything that we're doing now, um, it'll be so much easier for everyone because of what they're doing with uh, GitHub code spaces. As soon as code spaces goes general availability, do you know how, e how much easier it's gonna be to run through things? Like, wouldn't it be easier everybody if, uh, if yes, the people who wanna do everything locally, could do it locally. But if you are, if you're unfamiliar with all this, what if we could all go to the same place uh, and the things that we did, uh, we could do them on a common workspace where like the things that I'm doing, you could actually do because you would have this, you'd have access to the same tools, same computer, same everything that I was using. It'd be pretty dope. Um, it'd be pretty dope. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. I needed to go general availability like now, but it's pretty dope. It's, it's gonna be pretty dope. Uh, I think it's gonna help. It's gonna help primarily in the decoded class. This one might not be as beneficial in, but decoded and uh, even pipelines, I think it'll make it uh, 20 times easier to do stuff. Oh yeah, it won't, let you, it won't let you remove it, but like just delete the icon or something. I don't know. Chrome, I tried to switch to Firefox. I like Firefox. I do like Firefox, um, but I don't know. I, I'm. I think I installed too many extensions in Chrome and like it had everything that I needed. And then like, I couldn't see a reason to go to Chrome besides maybe privacy, but like, I just don't care anymore. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. Don't be like me. You should care more about your privacy, but I try to care about my privacy and I try to go to brave browser, which is built off of Chrome or, Cro or Chromium. Um, and I had to, I had to stop. I liked it. I actually do recommend I recommend it if you're not a web developer or if you are a web developer, use a different uh, program to debug because I tr I was troubleshooting an issue with my website for a day and a half and I could not figure out why it wasn't working. It was with Google Analytics and I could not figure out why it wasn't working. It was because Brave was actually blocking it due to security thing, like security reasons. It was like blocking my tracking codes and like it was so frustrating. It was like. It was one of the most frustrating things. It was, it was with the tracking code and it was with some front end change that like, I was like, this is an easy change and it would not work. And I, I found out it was because of Brave. So yeah. Okay. Probably, I probably, I, there's probably something I could have done, but then I got frustrated and I was like, yeah, I'm out, I'm out. And I came back to Chrome, but yeah, use, use whatever you like, unless it's, use whatever you like minus Internet Explorer. I also don't really recommend uh, Safari. Like it's just, I, I just think it's it's feature weak. Like I don't, but hey, if it's working for you, I keep using it. Everything except for IE. If you're using IE, please get off of IE. You're making everyone's lives hard. Like everyone, you, I mean, you're keeping salaries high, but uh, Safari is becoming the new IE. It really is. You're, you're keeping salaries high, but man, I please, for the sake of all of us, like, let IE go, please. Okay. So a web server serves web data. That's what we need to know. It serves web data over HTTP, hypertext transfer protocol. Here are some web servers. These are some, these are some of the more popular web servers. There are many web servers out there. Uh, the one in the top left is by a substantial margin, the most popular web server in the entire world. Uh, it's called Apache, really great web server. Uh, I really like it. Uh, pretty, pretty darn good. Pretty darn versatile, tried and true. A lot of people use it. Um, yeah, I agree. Phantom way hundred percent. The one on the right. And there's a reason why I made it the biggest. This is for psychological reasons. Uh, not just cause it filled the space. I could have easily made the Apache logo bigger, but Nginx, the reason I'm giving you Nginx right there is because Nginx is, um, <clears throat> It's it's a newer web server. Uh, it is very popular. It's it's extremely popular, um, but it's been more popular in the past few years uh, because of the it's it's better for the modern web um, and kind of the, the modern 
architecture and the way things are done um, nowadays. Uh, it's, you know, a lot of things are done with microservices and all this other stuff. Like Nginx has a little more flexibility for a lot of those things. Uh, there are trade offs here. We don't, you don't need to know them. Uh, like uh, I think I believe Apache is better for dynamic content and Nginx is better kind of for static content just because of the way that their workers run. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, they'll work just as well for both, uh, for, for a lot of things. Um, for most for most people's use cases at scale may be different but nginx i find to be uh the one i like working with the most i find it to be the most uh, uh yeah i find it to be more fun to work with uh the 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 use cases in which i need a web server uh, nginx really serves that better and like i said it's been super popular over the past few years um so it's a big one as well Apache tomcat i had i only threw this one in here because uh i was surprised at how many java people came through uh, and like said something about Apache Tomcat originally. I've worked with Tomcat before, uh, so it's a, it's it's Apache, but it's it's a it's a web server designed to work uh, with Java, uh, specifically for the JVM, um, for the Java virtual machine. So if you have Java programs, uh, I think you can serve more with it, but it's designed around that. It's a it's a bear to. I, I don't really like. I don't like it. As a sysadmin, I had to deal with Tomcat servers, and man, I had lots of trouble but all good. And then the last one on the on the bottom right is Microsoft IIS. Um, that stands for Information uh, in Interface Service, uh, inter Information Internet Service. Let's see, uh, Microsoft IIS. Uh, so if you're running Windows Server, this is um, one that comes with it. So also good to know that Apache and Nginx and stuff, they also run on Windows as well. So like, uh, it's not that you can't use those, but Windows Server does in fact have this as well. Internet information services, was I close? What did I say? Was I close? I don't know if I was close or not. I don't remember, I don't even know what I said because I made it up on the spot. I never remember. I've worked with IS before. I don't hate it. I really don't hate it. I've heard bad things about it. I don't hate it. My only con my only problem is that I like working with things from the command line and I never, I never learned how to manage IS from the command line. Windows servers generally do have a GUI. Uh, Windows servers m majority of the time have a graphical user interface. So if you really hate the command line, but you wanna work with servers still, um, I mean, you still probably gonna have to learn the command line, you probably have to learn PowerShell or something, but uh, my, the Microsoft servers uh, have a GUI you can do a lot of the management from. So do, I mean, you could also do that with Linux servers as well, but most people never install it. But yeah, so it's it's important that you know about that one. Well, I think you should know about IS as well, uh, just because it is the Windows one. Um, yeah, so these are the four probably more popular uh, web servers. There are tons of web servers, tons of them, um, a whole lot. But again, these are the main ones. Apache and Nginx are the ones that I would like you to be most familiar with. Um, so I don't know, just kind of commit them to memory. Um, I think, so I pronounce this as Nginx. I've heard people tell me it's not that, but then I've heard a lot of people say, yes, it is. I have no idea how you really pr pronounce it. I've heard people call it Nginx. I've, you know, I don't know. I call it Nginx and it feels right. And I'm not gonna change because I'm old and senile. So boom. I'm on Windows. Should I be using Command Prompt or PowerShell? Uh, either one. Either well, either one. Um, PowerShell probably has a little more tools, and it probably uh, PowerShell probably work for everything. Um, so I don't know. It doesn't really matter. The stuff we're gonna be doing is pretty simple. Cool one written in Go called Caddy. I'll, I'll check that out because I'm a Go fan. Because I also have a proxy like called Traffic and stuff uh, that I like. I probably should type in Web Server. Ooh, let's check this out. We're gonna do some stuff with this. Anything with Go? I like. All right, we'll check this out. Um, first off, I'm putting on this on things that I learned this week. Uh, it's Monday, so actually, let me show you guys this. This is exciting. Because like I said, we have time. We log in. Hmm. Why isn't it? I have a running list and I'm gonna try to do, I tried to do this before, but I forgot. Cause like, you know, I have pretty terrible memory. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I think I have, um, I think I have some type of ADD or something. Not be, I mean, I can focus, but I like, I lose things. Like I'll be in the middle 
of doing one thing and I'll completely forget like immediately like in the middle of doing it and I'll move to something else. It's really weird. Uh, I do it a lot. I do it a whole lot. And so like I almost just did it just now, but now I'm back on track because I remembered I was trying to get my password from here. But um, I'm trying to remember the things that I learn each week, like from the community. And uh, so now I'm I'm just keeping a what? I'm keeping a running list. Hey Brooks at mastermind.io. Paste it in. Let's get on in here. Yes, I am running gnome. I am. So things I learned today, this week, and we go away 18th. I, like I said, I just started today. Uh, I just started copying it down today because uh, I do want to be able to like. At the end of the week, I want to be able to like, I don't know, just like have something I can point people to, like like literally share this link of just random crap that I learned because I think it's important to start to track those things. Like this is what I learned today. Text alignment for different languages can be set uh, in the HTML tag by setting the direction uh, auto option. So what this means is we're actually trying to solve a problem where uh, where Arabic text needed to be aligned right as opposed to everything else. But the way we were like, building it like this wasn't a static page like it was being dynamically generated and so you know i, I that's just something i never thought about like it's never that i never thought about before and when researching it we found out like you just set this thing here and you could it would automatically align things that needed to be right aligned like uh cantonese and stuff and it would uh it would do that so that's what i learned today so i thought that was pretty cool and the next thing that i j learned is i forgot what i just learned what did i learn uh caddy server Go server, uh, go web server. All right, I learned about that. Excellent, dope stuff. I like it. PowerShell is bomb. I've heard great things about PowerShell. I've used it a bit and I, I seem to like it. I mean, I, I, no, I seem to like it. I like it. Um, I liked it for what I was using it for, but I just don't do a lot of Windows stuff. Not, and again, not that I have a a problem with Windows. It's just, I, that just hasn't been the path that my life has taken or my career has taken. <laughs> Sakar, I feel you. Okay, that makes me feel better. I feel like I got some, uh, you know, my people. I'm with my people. All right. I know, man. I I've heard good things about it, but I don't know. So far, so far, I'm fine. I mean, so far, it ha I haven't been fired. So how about that? No 2FA. Um, yes. Uh, no. So I had to turn off 2FA when I got my new phone. Um, I had to do a lot, I had to do a lot of crap to get 2FA turned off, uh, but I do need to re-enable 2FA. Thank you for saying that. Um, I have it on my, it's weird because I have it on my main, um, I have it on my main account, like my personal account, but not on my business account. That's weird. It's pretty stupid actually, but uh, good call out. Where does Dare auto, uh, auto go? It, yes, the HTML tag. Well, it, it needs to go into the div or the paragraph or the span that that the text is going to be in and what it does is it like checks the um i'm not a web developer by the way so this stuff maybe maybe everyone knew this but as someone who's not a web developer this was exciting to me um but it, what it does is i think it pulls the first character of the section and it, it determines whether or not uh that is a right aligned or left aligned language and it will go ahead and do that um it'll go ahead and do that so you gotta be careful though, because if you have other text sections inside of like a div, like you put it on the div and you have like two or three paragraphs, like maybe you have uh, a language that needs to be right aligned and then you have some English, like a link under it, uh, it will also write align that as well. I don't know, I had something I learned today. I, again, there you go. That is my web tip for the day, which I don't, I don't know anything about the web. Don't know anything about the web. Uh, oh, this note take this note taking site is um, Notion. It's a tool that I use called Notion. I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, for someone like me, I had a lot of trouble. Like I use Evernote before this, um, but this one again, I, I think because it's just easier to do things. Like the way my mind works, it allows me to just I don't know put all the stuff that I needed here, and uh, yeah, it works. Okay. I spend time writing a graph to risk algorithm, but forgot how to center a container. Yes, container side by side in Flexbox. Aaron Dev, you are, we are the same. We're, you, we are one. I, that's me. I can, do, I like, I have built, uh, again, super, 
I said all the time, I built like very performance scalable systems that can serve, you know, hundred thousands or millions of customers, you know, be super reliable, super resilient. And, you know, I build APIs and stuff, but man, the first time I was asked like a year ago, they were like, Hey, can we, can you like, we need to change the colors on this map and react. And I was like, bruh, I got this like easy. I died. I like, I couldn't center an image. Like I struggled uh, and I still struggle with those things. So big respect for everyone out there doing uh, all those, all the web, all the web developers out there. I don't envy you, uh, to be honest. I find your job to be very difficult. Um, I like coming up with a solution that people can't see and building it to how I think it should work. Uh, but sometimes you have to take uh, a vision that someone else already made who has no idea about the technical aspects of it and you got to implement it technically. And that seems scary to me to be 100% honest with you. Uh, so yeah, just, you know, we're honest here. We are, we are honest here. All right. So uh, installing a web server, we're going to do it live, you know? Um, and actually I meant to delete all these cause I just copy and paste as you guys, I'm sure can tell I just copy and paste, um, the slides so that I don't have to make them and I just change the information. These aren't supposed to be in here. This is supposed to be the last slide to today. Installing a web server is supposed to be it. And tomorrow, I mean, and the other ones are just, they're just copies of each one. Um, so yeah, let's do a live. It's gonna be nice. It's gonna be nice and simple. We have a whole hour to do a task that's very simple. Um, the goal tonight is to install uh, Nginx. Actually, um, it sounds like uh, was it, feel, it, it feels like we're gonna have time to do Apache as well, uh, and to kind of just talk through these ports um, and just uh, just kind of understanding how that works. Uh, I think everyone will be able to have a, a web server up and running. We'll even get a not only will we get the web server up and running but we'll grab some free HTML sites or something and we'll try to set them up. But yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm a copy paste pro. I might put it on my resume actually. I mean, I actually, I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't plan on working for anyone else uh, for a very long time. So, I mean, I need it for a while, but I might put copy paste pro on there on my LinkedIn. I might put it on there because I, I want people to know that I'm proud of that fact. And they should be, they should be happy when they see that and to that I'm that I'll admit it. They should, you know. Oh yeah, for the new folks, um, I work at probably the dopest company in the world. Um, I, I, well, I'm, I, the reason this is part of this is happening, like was encouragement from this company, but we're gonna company called Fearless. Um, out of Baltimore, software company. We do some dope stuff. We build software with a soul. Um, I love it. I've been there for, I've been there for almost four years, three, three, three and a half, three and three quarters years. Um, and that says a lot. I had never, ever been anywhere more than 18 months before I came here. I've had maybe seven or eight other jobs in the past eight years. Um, and I never stayed anywhere for longer than 18 months. And I've been here for almost four years. Uh, I can't, I can't say enough. Like, here's the thing. I'm not someone who's like, oh, like, the, like, like I love the people. I, I like, I'm not someone who's like, oh yeah. Like the work is like, the, like amazing. Like I'm not someone who loves to work. <laughs> um, so like, I think it's, I, I hope I'm not someone who loves to work this. I, I think work only gets, but so good. Um, and so I think when I, when I, Think about what a company should have uh, or like what makes a good company is one. Um, I used to didn't feel this way, but mission mission now feels really good. Um, I didn't feel like this when I usually I just wanted a job and I would work wherever. They don't really care what you did. Um, but after working here, I actually care about mission now companies missions um, and kind of what they're working towards. Uh, fearless. They want to build software with the soul. They really want to help government do things the right way. I actually, years ago, actually vowed never work for the government again, because I only had bad experiences with government contractors because the government uh, is old school and they don't like change. They're very averse to change. Uh, and tech was old and they, you know, uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of our tax dollars, um, <laughs> get wasted because of bad tech, like to be hundred percent honest, because they, they, like there's too much red tape around things. Um, and yeah, I mean, a lot of it is, is because of bad tech, but, um, they're, they're trying to change that. And that, that actually means a lot to me, especially as a, so I work on the 
I work for on a project with a small business administration and I'm a small business owner now. So like I can immediately see how impactful uh, some a lot of the things are uh, like I'll, I'll be doing work on weekends and I'll come across things that we just help deploy. And wow, this is great. This is like so immediately uh, uh, applicable. But yeah, um, it's pretty dope. People are great. Like I've t like I've made I've made lifelong friends here. Uh, I brought I brought a lot of people here with me. Um, but again, pretty dope. It's it's not it is not uh, it's not Twitter. You're not gonna get paid four hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, it's a it's a Baltimore based uh, IT company that pays well. Uh, has a lot of perks. You get seven hundred fifty dollars worth of tech stuff per year and a wellness budget, so they pay for your gym membership uh, up to a certain amount and uh, four thousand dollars of training budget. Go do what you want to do. Four dollars in snacks every month. Four hundred one k. I don't know. Just a good company. Genuinely good people. Um, like genuinely good people, to be honest, but it's fun. I, I really do enjoy it. So that's my, I, I'll always shout them out whenever I can. They'll always hold a special place in my heart. I mean, my goal is to, uh, it, my goal, I'm, I'm working on leaving there right now. They know everyone knows, uh, but it's to do, uh, mastermind things full time on not, not just the Academy full time. Um, there's other aspects that I want to work on, but to, it will give me the opportunity to actually focus on the Academy the way that I want to focus on it. There's so much I had planned for this run, this run, but like didn't have time. Like I wanted to have like repos already set up with everyone. So like you could just go grab stuff and everything will be ready and just, you know, run out of time because of COVID and you work for the SBA and they have to give out, you know, all the relief money and they're not ready. So you help them get ready. It's pretty interesting, but I, I highly encourage everyone to check it out. Reach out to me so that I can put in your resume. I'll put in anyone's resume. If you see a job on the site, we are hiring right now. I believe um, we're pretty much always hiring. And, uh, you know, I might have my, we, we do get referral bonuses. So I'll, I'll split it with you. I'll give you a little bit. I'll take you to dinner. No problem. You know, I don't, I'll send you a, I'll send you a little, uh, gift card. Not, not a problem at all. Not a problem. Uh, can they employ me from London? Uh, maybe like now, like now I think every company is more open to, you know, worldwide workers. So I can check, I can find out to be honest. I usually end up interviewing HR people by their company. That's that is pretty darn good. I like that. Flipping the flipping the script. I do like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I yes, I agree. I like the two sided conversation. I like to do that as, as well. But yes, I do want to be my own boss. I want to, uh, you know, I want to give it a go. I I I, I found out that um, I, I know what I want in life, and like it's not the riches. <laughs> it's not the riches. Like I just. I kind of just want to do my own thing. And if I can, you know, I, I believe that I can earn enough money to do my own thing, um, you know, on, on my own. So I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it for a while. And if not, these tech jobs are always out here. Remote available. Yeah, there are there. There is definitely remote jobs available. Um, so every project that because it's a government contractor, every job, every position is not remote uh, friendly. But uh, especially now, um, like I think that's going to change. But um, yeah, uh, we definitely have remote jobs security rules over there that's very interesting jump ship that you asked that can you actually reach out to me um on like linkedin or something because maybe um that's not generally something we've done um but it's, be it's becoming something that we're doing so yeah entry level yes uh actually the um yeah yes we we actively because the company talks about a lot we actively one day were like hey we said we want you know we said I think for a while we were we were like touting that the company was 50% women or like 48% women or something and you know 40% minority or something like that but it was a little bit um some of the some of the women engineers uh basically felt like that was you know lying and the intentions were good like it wasn't and like it wasn't we weren't lying uh they were just saying like a lot of those roles weren't engineering roles and they thought that for a software company that was misleading so they're like cool like well um then we're like yeah you're right so we'll hire uh so something we want to do, something as a part of our goals is to be intentional about this. So we hired engineers and both both experienced women engineers and junior engineers at the gate. We've hired a, we've hired a lot of junior engineers over the past couple of years. One, um, because we have uh, we have the there's a structure. So we actually have engineering coaches and things. So there's a structure to kind of support them. Um, and there's enough there's enough senior engineers to support uh, the junior engineers. Um, so they won't, they, they, they're, they're, they're not going to hire a junior engineer for something there, uh, to be on a project where they won't be supported, but junior engineers do get hired. Um, 
especially because it's just the amount of projects and things that we kind of have to do but yeah uh there hasn't been an internship any internships in a while when i started there were we had like four in three or four interns uh but we haven't had any since uh, i'm not really sure why but uh maybe well, maybe i'll maybe i'll check on it i don't know hey rise tech umbc that's i that's where I, that's where i went to school as well currently looking for an internship as a comp side major sophomore um, I'm gonna check on that. I am gonna check on that. Ask me about that again. I'm gonna check on internships because I know it's something we used to do, but it is not something that we have been doing. So I, I will 100% check on that. Okay, we gotta get moving on this, even though we still have enough time. Uh, go ahead and hop into your web server if you already have one spun up. If not, don't sweat it. We're gonna just quickly go through spinning up one from scratch. When does it work with the US Gov? Are there mandates to only have US citizens work on your projects? Um, uh, yes, I do think that is, uh, yes. I think for almost every project we work on, if not all of them, we don't only do government work, but we mainly do government work. Um, so yeah, I do think that is a mandate um, for most of the stuff uh, kind of out of, out of our control. Okay, I'm gonna launch an instance. We're gonna use, so hopefully you spun this up with Ubuntu. Um, no big deal if you didn't, I can kind of walk you through it. It's gonna be a very similar process if you didn't, but hopefully you did. So we went into services and then right here, the very first option is gonna be EC2 or you can type it in here if you don't see it, but excuse me, the LaCroix got me uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit gassy, you know? Yeah, we should have time. Um, I can go over doing it from the command line as well. Well, we are going to do the installation of the server on the command line, but spinning up one. Yeah, we can do that. So click on EC2 there. Um, head over to um, just scroll down the page a little bit. You might be able to see it if you're zoomed in or zoomed out farther than me. But scroll down the page a little bit and you can see launch instance down here and go ahead when you're ready. If you and only go through this, if you haven't already done it, if you already have a server that you know how to log into um, or that you're ready to log into. You don't need to do this piece. I'm just doing it for everyone who missed it because we have time. Launch instance. So we're gonna get to this launch instance page. Jump ship, dope, dope. I'll check, uh, I'll check right after this. Yes, oh, lacerated digits. Thank you for that. Uh, Cause someone taught me that last time as well. Um, I also, I didn't know about, uh, I didn't know Windows 10 had SSH by default. I'm a Windows user, I didn't know, um, but Windows 10 has SSH now, exclamation point. That's something that I learned, uh, I learned it last week, but I think it's worthy of going on this week because it's pretty dope. All right, so you're on this page with all of the AMIs, all the machine images that Amazon gives you by default that you can base your server off of. Scroll down a little bit, choose the one with the little orange logo called Ubuntu 1804, and we'll select this. So we'll select that. Make sure you're on the free tier eligible one. So this is gonna be your T2 micro. Just go ahead and, you know, click right, make sure that's selected. And once you're ready, configure instance details. All right, you can also leave all of this the same. You will learn about all this um, over time, but leave all of this just as is. No need to touch any of it and click next. You can change this number here to 30 if you want. Eight is fine, eight is more than enough, uh, but you get up to 30 gigs for free. So you could change this up to 30 if you'd like. Um, I generally do it, but if you leave it, if you left it at eight, don't sweat it, that works completely good. What's up DC Spock? Uh, what's up Trizzle, Trizzle Trop? What's up Young Giovanni, Maypock, Dr. Jorks? A phantom way we've already been talking curious uh rxid what's up uh martini vodka 10 how's everybody doing all right so you leave it here click next add tags again you can give it a name if you like this is this is an optional step no big deal if you want to give it a name just give it a name uh and type a name right here with a capital n pretty important that it has a capital n um and then we're gonna call this uh web server we're calling this Horizons Web Server because I have a lot of servers spun up right now. So Horizons Web Servers. Next security group. Now, we're not going to mess with this right now. Leave it defaults. 
leave it as default, but we are gonna be messing with security groups tonight and review and lunch. So really you could have not messed with anything. You could have just kept clicking next and you basically would have had yourself a server. So launch. This part is important. If you're following along right now uh, for the first time, make sure when you get to this page that you create a new key pair, type in any name you want for it and click download. You, it's not even gonna let you move past it until you do download it. So you gotta download it, but I already have one. So I'm gonna choose an existing one and first instance, I think is the key that we used that we spelled wrong. No biggie. And so I'm gonna launch it. All right. So now here's where we're gonna completely move away from the console. Um, not gonna be in the console anymore. <laughs> we're gonna move over to the command line. So everyone get ready. And this is where I'll start going slow. I'll start, well, this is where I'll like, I'll take our, we can take our time, ask the questions. We'll try to get everyone in a good spot, hopefully. And we'll give it a few seconds to come up, but you can see here why the name will be good, will be nice to identify stuff with. Cause if I remove this, we spun up a bunch of servers on Saturday. So now we got a lot of servers here. Um, so it just helps a little bit, but I have them all stopped right now. This is the one that we need. So first thing we're going to do to be able to install a web server is we're going to log in and we are going to, uh, yeah, we're going to log in first. So let's practice our key based authentication. So let's practice that. So you can, again, you can use either the IP address. So again, the IP address is just like your home address. It is the place on a network, which a computer lies, um, or which people can reach it, you know, over a network. And so this is our IP address of my server. Um, and so I can either use this or I can use this. This right here is just an alias for this. This is the real thing, uh, but this is commonly what people like. This is just a, a prettier way for us to access it. This is the same paradigm as like when you go to google.com, how you get there, like google.com is actually pointed at an IP address, but this little DNS address allows you to kind of get there with a more, with a prettier address. Um, so I'm gonna copy this one. Doesn't really matter which one you copy. No, we'll copy IP address because it's shorter. Let's copy IP address, either one. And so let's hop over to our terminal and let's try to log in. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna navigate to my uh, to where my key is, to where that, that PIM file that we downloaded is. I'm gonna navigate there. You don't have to navigate to it, but if you don't navigate, if you don't navigate to it, you have to call it via the path, either the full, either the absolute or relative path to use it um, to where it's located. So another way that might make it easier for you is if you're on, I think on every other OS, I think you could find it inside of your files menu. Like, and I think you go to like, mine is in documents and AWS keys. And then I could right click here and click open in terminal. And then I'm now at the right place. Like it'll take me right to where I need to be. I think you can do that in Windows as well. And we can actually check. Um, I think in Windows, play control, so left. I think I can do, excuse me. Man, this LaCroix is, it's really messing me up. So I think in Windows, I can go to like documents and I can right click. And this allows me to open a terminal here. So hopefully you can do that as well. Use the address bar. You can do it up here. Or, or are you saying use that to get the location? Yeah, you can do that too. But I think, you, I think if it doesn't work, uh, like mine allows me to open up Hyper, because that's what I have set as my like default terminal or console. But, um, but yeah, shift right click to open in PowerShell. Nice. So shift right click. Oh yeah. So if you're on windows do that. So if you don't know where, if you don't know how to navigate yet via the command line, find it in here. So find it in your, wherever it is in your thing here, find out where your key is and then hold shift and right click. And it'll say open in PowerShell. That's nice. I like that. Or just type CMD in the address bar. So just up here. I don't know anything about windows. Oh, come on. Add it, add it. Hey, we're adding that. Oh man, this is. You guys are, whew. I need to hang around all of y'all more. So, uh, wait, can you do that in Linux as well? I mean, I don't think you need to, but like, 
there's no actually there's no type bar uh kind of do like uh i don't know okay not the same doesn't matter but uh, i like that uh and when the type cmd and windows uh file explorer to open uh cmd prompt at location thank you thank you very much powershell or, or pow mm -hmm. oh wait type cmd or powershell nice 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 that i like that a lot learn something new i might man that's nice okay so i'm gonna navigate uh we're gonna, we're gonna use some of our linux commands for me to navigate to where my uh to where my key is. So again, my key is in documents and then AWS keys. So I need to go to documents, AWS keys. So I'm going to, I'm going to go in there now. So I'm going to CD into documents, AWS keys, CD stands for change directory. So I'm going to move in there. So I'm not on the server yet. I'm still trying to get logged in. Um, so I'm still trying to get logged in. So don't sweat it. Uh, Chris Antoine missed the part across where we created that server. So you can try to go through and click through uh, what I just clicked through. Um, like if you go to create an instance, go to like launch instance and run and just keep clicking next. You don't need to change any of the options. The, uh, the last screen, it'll make you create a new key if you've never created one before and just make sure you download it. Um, and you can try to use that. So I have my first instance.pem that I spelled wrong. First, first instance that PM, cause you know, fat finger gang, you know, you feel me? You know, make a lot of mistakes. Fat finger gang with a tiny keyboard. I don't know if I ever showed y'all, but I have a 60% keyboard. No, no arrows, uh, no function keys up top. You know, my, my mastermind colors a little bit fancy custom. You know, we, we, we build custom things over here. We're fancy, but again, small keyboard, fat fingers. You make a lot of mistakes out here. A whole lot of mistakes actually. With switches, I'm rocking the Zelios V2s. Zelios V2, 67 grams. Uh, I like them. They're better than Browns. I, I used to run Browns, um, but I'm rocking Zelios V2s. How do I get to my PIM file? So that's so that's why I said try to go through your. Uh, if you don't know, do you know where it is? Do you know where your PIM file is? Do you know where you downloaded it to? It's probably. Uh, I don't know if you're on Mac or PC. It's. It's in my downloads file and I just navigate there. Perfect. If you already, so if you're in your downloads file and you navigate it to your downloads file, perfect. Then you're, you're right where you need to be. Hey, I mean, they're heavy. Fat fingers are also heavy. Makes it easier to type on, on, you know, uh, heavier switches. I did that last week, but I, I have the instance, but don't remember downloading the keys. Yeah. So try creating a, um, if you don't remember downloading the keys, check your downloads folder, either windows or Mac. Um, if not, go ahead and just create a new one. And then on the last screen, it'll it'll be a pop-up and say, hey, choose your key uh, and you can download a new one. Ah, that's fair, that's fair. Okay, so once you find your key, let's put together our SSH command. How do we, what's the, what's the command? Remember it's SSH uh, username at IP address is the main, is the main setup of it. So it's SSH. The user for an Ubuntu server for all of us is going to be Ubuntu at IP address. This is the main SSH setup. Like this is the, this is how SSH works. You know, log in, basically secure, start a secure shell with this user on this computer. It's kind of how it works. But if I were to do this, um, okay, it's going to fail because the way it's set up. But if, if we weren't on Amazon, um, this will be how you did it. And then it would ask you, uh, it wouldn't ask you for a username because this is your username right here. So it wouldn't ask you for your username, but it would ask you for a password and you would type it in. It wouldn't show you typing it in. Uh, so don't be confused. I've seen people be really confused about that. Um, uh, actually check out, I'll do it on a, I'll do it on another server that will let me. So SSH, uh, root at a little, uh, a little bit of, uh, free publicity for someone site that I host. Um, I'm not going to log in, but um, see how it asks for the password here. And I type it in. 
I don't think I typed in the right password. Oh, I did. And it let me log in just fine that way. Um, that is how SSH normally works. But this will not allow us to do that. So I have to use the key. Remember, we have to use key-based authentication. So I have to give it the key and hopefully the key that I have opens up the lock. So uh, the way that they do that is you got a dash I and that stands for identity file. So it says, hey, this is the file that confirms my identity. And then I and then I type in the name of the file that um, that uh, the PIM file that I have. So this is what your commands gonna look like, but it's gonna be SSH space dash I space the name of that file the, the PIM file that you downloaded whatever you named it put that here Ubuntu that like you're gonna need Ubuntu the at symbol like so you're gonna have all of this and then your server's IP address okay I saw you comment on KBD fans it was it was um oh about the I think I think I commented about the uh the PCB uh, cause it's a very interesting PCB and now I'm hooked on this PCB. I really like it. I'm going to build another one. Um, so SSH dash I your key. So that PIM file, Ubuntu at whatever your IP address is. I'll give you a chance, take some time, try to get that together. And when you're ready, just go ahead and hit enter. I'll, let you, I'll, I'll leave it up. So if you need to see it. Yeah, without that key, you'll be able to create an instance. You just won't be able to log. Well, yeah, yeah, you won't be able to create a key. Like you have to have, like you had to have had a key download. So maybe check your downloads folder. Yeah, perfect. You just said that. I did not read. Reading is fundamental. I should probably read before I speak. Yeah, the, the layout's super weird. So while you guys are looking at that, Oh, wait, wait, say, say, what am I saying again? Oh, so SSH dash I your PIM file. Oh, actually there's another step here. I, I'm sorry, but your, your PIM file, Ubuntu at your IP address. Now, hey, Craig, it says permission denied, but does it say, yeah, it says, it probably says uh, permissions to open. It probably, there's probably something in that error about permissions being too open. Uh, so what I want everyone to do, and I don't know if this is going to work on Windows. So this is actually pretty interesting um, because of when the way Windows permissions work. Oh, yeah, so Windows, you have to change it to read only. I'm not sure that I'm not sure to do that from the command line on Windows, but for everyone on Macs, um, and maybe we can figure out how to do it on Windows in a second. You want to run this command, chmod uh, 0400, uh, just, just 400. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I don't want to confuse you. Same thing. Uh, and then the name of the file. So first, this is the command that you want to run. chmod 400 and the name of your file. When you hit it, it'll nothing will happen. But if uh, once you do that on a Mac um, or if you're on Windows running like Windows Subsystem for Linux, uh, if you do an ls dash l you should see that there's an just an R, like it should look just like this right next to it. Now on Windows, it sounds like you need to make it read only. Um, so I would find it, um, if I were you, I would find it in your find in your browser thing, in your uh, your file explorer. So find it in here. And I think you can right click it and go to properties, I think. So if you're on Windows, find it here. I'm just, this. I don't have it on, on Windows, but I think I can right click it and go to properties. And then I think you can just click this attribute right here that says read only. I know it's a little, I don't know how to make my windows. I can't control plus my windows, but right click it, properties, read only. Do it again, right click it, properties, read only, and then click apply as I think how you do it. Okay. Yes. Uh, so the, yes, you are the, the, you are too open. So why, um, is it saying that you are too open? So again, SSH is designed for security. SSH stands for secure shell. Uh, so, um, what you are changing with this zero four zero zero is the permissions. So the same way you make something read only, 
um, is we just we basically made this file read only with the 400 Linux permissions are uh, are a pretty cool topic. Uh, I like I like Linux permissions because uh, it's a concept that's like wild at first. It takes a little while to, get, to wrap your head around. Uh, even though it's a fairly simple concept, it's just a interesting structure. It's basically uh, identified by, you know, uh, numbers, three three different numbers um, and these little lines right here. So, uh, huh. so yeah, so we, we can talk about that another time. But yeah, as long as you set the permissions right, you can go ahead and you can log in. So let's put together our command again. Uh, SSH dash I spam uh, Ubuntu. Ubuntu at there we go. So I'm gonna hit enter and it logged me in. And this is the first time that I am in this server ever. Super nice. So what's up, uh AOK? Welcome to the welcome to the channel. What's up, QQQ QQ9? What's up, MP Peru? Jump ship. Welcome, welcome. I think I got everyone else. All right. Um, so let me know. Once you're in, hey Craig, I'm glad you got in. And is anyone else having, is anyone who, who already had the server spun up having trouble getting in um, that we can try to resolve right now? What's next, app get update? Absolutely, go ahead. If you if you know what, if you know what to do there, go ahead and run it. Um, actually everyone, yeah, if you're already in, you can go ahead and do this next step. If you're not in, go ahead and put your, where you're stuck in the chat. Or if you're not sure where you're actually stuck, put a screenshot in uh, either Slack or Discord and we'll try to check it. Uh, but um, we could probably skip the upgrade for now, but but yes, yeah. so the first thing you should do uh, Whenever you spin up a new server, the first thing you should do is you should update it uh, Update the packages on it and, and upgrade the ones that can be upgraded. Um, so there's apt update uh, Well, actually there's sudo apt update. So I want, first thing I want you to type is s u d o Apt Update first thing I want you to type all right, I'll leave that up there for a second so you can copy it. What does this command do? This is actually the command right here. And apt is just a package manager that just helps you manage the software on your computer. Uh, an update is just gonna go out and, you know, get all get updated information about packages and things that are available to you. Uh, it's gonna update your, your repositories that grab information uh, in the package manager. And sudo right here, this command, you're gonna see, the, you're gonna see me run this a lot today. All sudo does is allows you to run a command basically as the administrator. It's like on Windows, sometimes you know you need to right click and click run as administrator. It allows you to escalate your privileges to give you more power. So sudo, let's go ahead and run this with escalated privileges and go ahead and update. So if you hit enter, it's gonna do a bunch of stuff for you. Let it run through and have some fun with that. Step two install, install Docker, I'm with you. I'm with you, I'm a, I'm a huge Docker fan. You found your key, but it didn't work. Uh, can you, can you, what, what error are you getting, uh, Chris Antoine? Do you have the right IP address? Um, yeah, what, what, um, like maybe paste in the command that you're actually running, the SSH, maybe paste in your SSH command. Uh, I failed to create a key, so I wasn't able to log in. Uh, yeah, so try um, try creating a new one if you did that. What's up, uh, Korth44? What's up, Math1377? Welcome to the channel. Good to have you. We're just setting up a web server today. We're almost, we're real close to being done. I know you guys might be like, whoa, like we just got in here. Yep, we're real close to being done. Well, we're real close to having a web server up and we're gonna do some more stuff after that, but like, the basic web server, we are super close to getting it installed. Okay. Um, the next thing you usually do, um, really in the same step, we could have done it. I wasn't gonna do it, but I'm gonna do it. Uh, it should be pretty fast. We have time. So um, usually you run an, an update and then you have to run an upgrade. So right now uh, it went out and got all the information about all the packages that, um, that it can work with. And it says 39 packages can be upgraded run apt list upgradable to see them. Now you could run that and it will show you which packages could be upgraded. Instead, it's a fresh installation. We can't break anything. It's best to get your, your system on a nice baseline uh, when you're doing this stuff. So the first thing you should do is update and upgrade. So now we're just gonna do sudo apt upgrade instead of update. 
So first thing we did was update it, then we're gonna upgrade it. It's gonna make sure all of our software is at the latest. So it's gonna run through. Yes, you can chain them together. Great question. So you can chain them together like this. Um, commands in Linux, there's a few different ways to chain them together. The way that you're gonna wanna chain them together here is to do uh, and and, so two ampersands, and then you're gonna do sudo apt upgrade. That's how you chain them together if you want. So you can run this whole command right here if you'd like. I'll paste it in the chat unless someone else already did. Nope, someone already did it. Thank you, frequency app. Ah, I like it. And the dash Y is nice. So when you're doing things on Linux, uh, you can see actually right here, it, asks, it says, hey, do you want to, it's going to say, hey, we're going to update these packages. Do you want to continue? And I had to intervene and say yes or no. Uh, this dash Y that, um, that uh, who, who put that up there? Frequency hop put the dash Y. This says, hey, go ahead and answer yes to any time it's asking for feedback. Go ahead and enter yes uh, for that. So I'm gonna just run this. It's gonna run an update again, no big deal. And it's gonna go straight into the upgrade. So if you already run the update, you can just run upgrade or you can run them both together. And so now you're just learning a little bit of extra Linux things. So to, to run two commands together, uh, one after another, it's two ampersands. But what that also means is, um, with two ampersands, it means that the, the second command will only run if the first command finishes successfully. Uh, a lot, I've seen a lot of people uh, try to run something and be very confused. They copied and pasted a bunch of stuff and like they thought it was finishing it, but it, it was never actually running the second thing because they didn't realize the first one actually failed. And so if the first command before the double ampersands fails, the second one will not run. So the second one only runs upon full success if you use an ampersands um so yeah a little more a little more linux stuff not not so much aws but uh important nonetheless we're working on being a uh, well-rounded cloud individuals whatever you decide to do with the cloud we just you know we want to want to be well-rounded How do you chain them? I'm trying to see how you chain them together. I think you chain them together um, without caring about success by by doing, um, uh, let's say like cat hello that txt. Uh, I think to chain them together without doing that, you just put a put one of these um, and ls. No, so that still works. Oh yeah, so yes, that's how you do it. So if you wanna chain commands together, but you don't care if the first one passes or not, uh, you can do, you can put a little uh, semicolon in between and it'll run the first one. So this one actually fails, but then it does the LS right after. So it lists out the things that are in this directory. But if I put a double ampersands here, you can see here, it never lists out the files because it never runs this because this one fails because this file does not exist. So double ampersands in Linux equals run the first one and then run the second one if the first one succeeds. If you don't care about the first one succeeding, you can just do a little semicolon. Uh, yes, there is a more detailed schedule. I'm sorry here. You know what? You know what? I'm sure I'm going to share this right now. I'm just going to share the page itself. Uh, curriculums. Cause I'm, I, I, I wanted to put it on the website and then I like didn't and you know, I just keep getting busy. So this is the list. Um, and you guys can take a look at like, there's nothing, there's nothing in here. I'm not using this to, I, I'm not actually, I only use this to, to separate out what they are. Um, everything else is done in Google classroom. So there's no like things in here. So share public access can read. There we go. Uh, copy page link. Uh, yes. So this is the intro. Uh, because this is the apprentice course, so this is the kind of beginner uh, AWS course, we're not covering um, Lambda. We're not covering Lambda. I have videos in the YouTube for Lambda if you want it. We're covering S3 uh, Monday of next week uh, and Wednesday of next week. Um, but yeah, uh, Lambdas will come in part two. So once we're done with this eight weeks, we'll move up to a journeyman level course. So that'll be the mid-level intermediate level course. We will work with Lambda in that course. Uh, as well as the advanced course that will come in the following eight weeks. I do not use Kali Linux. Um, but here's the here's the link to the notion for this. Um, so you should you can see that and you can see my little uh, when I was first 
like planning out i use my ipad to like plan some stuff out and when i was first planning this out this is kind of my original page that i started to like build this off of so you get a little uh you get a little uh a little information but yes there's the more detailed schedule hopefully you can access that okay so after wait for the oh okay so during the upgrade um if you ran the app update and upgrade uh it might give you some information it might ask you some questions like this um i would keep everything default uh for now so i would just hit enter whenever you get them whenever they pop up there's probably two or three um hit it just hit enter and move on to the next one um and then you should be done those were asking about like grub and stuff don't sweat it just hit enter for that uh, I don't do a lot of security, like pen testing stuff. So I don't know. I don't mess with Cali that much. In your course, will you teach how to hack into the FBI mainframe? Yes. Uh, actually, what I'm doing right now is I'm setting all your computers up so that I can uh, use them for more computing power uh, so that I can do exactly that to hack into FBI mainframes. That is, that's what we do here, you know? So your page from another dude I follow. Seems like a great vibe. Appreciate that. Uh, what's your main thing? Um, so we, 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 we teach, uh, a, a various amount of technical courses. I'm a DevOps person, uh, cloud infrastructure, engineering, infrastructure automation. So I do a lot with, uh, I do a lot with, um, uh, like, uh, not so much with Terraform, but, uh, a lot, a lot with AWS, a lot of scripting, a lot of, uh, building APIs and things, a lot of, uh, you know, um, he used to do a bunch of configuration management stuff with Ansible and Terraform and chef and stuff like that. Um, but now I do all kinds of stuff, software. So we do, we have a software bootcamp, <laughs> introduction to software bootcamp. We have uh, this one, which is cloud computing. And on Saturdays, we have one called pipelines, which is an introduction to software engineering, uh, infrastructure and automation, uh, which is like a DevOps and SRE course. So a bunch of stuff, uh, definitely a bunch of stuff. Uh, and, and those will shift over time. Like more and more things will be popping up. We're gonna be doing a web dev one in the next eight weeks as well. So yeah, whole bunch of stuff here. Okay. So after you have everything updated, you are now 80% of the way to having a working web server. 80% of the way there. You might be like, man, I didn't do much yet. I logged in, I ran two commands. Logging in is probably the hardest part. And then just copy and paste the command that we pasted in the chat. Now let's get a web server installed. We are gonna install Nginx. I can hear those fans whirling already oh from 3080 hey I'm, I'm in for the 3080 i thought you meant my fan and i was like i i i, I have my rtx voice thing set up i thought i filtered out the sound of the ceiling fan um but yeah i might i might upgrade you know i mean i don't know why well I'm, i would upgrade because me and some friends are uh like i said we're you know i play games with friends when you know when i do have downtime the little bit of downtime i do have we play we play games we're gonna play some games tonight i'm streaming tonight i'm actually gonna stream get some games tonight uh i think uh my streaming channel is stone cold stream austin if anyone wants to check it out it's uh i'll share it <laughs> i'll share it it's, it, there's nothing on there uh but we're just having some fun um Right now we mostly play uh, Call of Duty War Zones. We've never won a game. Uh, so we're, try we're trying to win a game, uh, but I also play Valorant, uh, which I'm really loving. Uh, I used to play a lot of Overwatch. I still play every now and then, but um, I don't play so much now. But I also play a lot of like, right now I'm also playing Gears of War Tactics. Um, I also play uh, yeah, Overwatch Gears of War Tactics. I still need to play through Doom. So I play a bunch of stuff, but yeah, Stone Cold Stream Austin, Vape Juice Jordan. What's up? What's up, man? How you doing? Uh, shout out to Vape Juice. Uh, he's also a streamer. Um, let's see, S O Vape. Yeah, I'm, I'm a terrible type. I, I I'm getting worse. I got I was getting better, and then I got worse somehow. Um, but check out Vape Juice Jordan. He has a pretty dope stream. Uh, does a lot of stuff. He's actually building uh an interesting uh like a container platform uh for Docker. Um, like containers a service like platform. It's pretty cool. Um, uh, but does a lot of JavaScript, TypeScript stuff, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, a pretty dope channel for sure. Um, I, I'm over there. Like I head over there like every day, like every day uh, I head over there all the time. I can't stick around for that long usually, but uh, it's pretty, it's pretty entertaining. Um, what rank are you on Valorant? I don't want to talk about it. You got diamond. Ah, uh, that's whack. I, not whack. Congratulations to you. But what did I say in my introduction? I'm very competitive, but completely average or less than average of a gamer but i'm very competitive I, I did really good in my placement matches i won four out of five and like i got top fragger twice and like 
I got I'm I'm like I'm like the highest iron I think or silver or low silver I think I'm, I think I'm silver one or something I don't know but it's not good whatever it is so I'm about to grind and get my get my stats up I wish I had more time to do it to be honest okay we're almost there and that's why we're taking our time talking about all kinds of other things because the last step to getting our web server set up and running is I want you all to run S U D O what what was that? You guys remember what that was? That was the command to escalate your privileges. This is like run as administrator. It's really run as root basically, uh, but run as administrator is what I, how you think of it right now. Um, and I want you to run apt. So this is using that package manager we talked about. Install. All right, so it's gonna install a package for us and we're gonna install Nginx. And this is the command that's gonna allow you to share all the information you want over hypertext transfer protocol http or well just over http right now um yeah hypertext transfer protocol so that is the command i want you to run once you get in there and i want you to hit uh <laughs> you said that's what you want to do use it for nudes hey Whatever floats your boat. Right now, nudes are a, a perfectly viable way of uh, self-support. You know, I, however you gotta get the money, go get the money. Just if you're gonna put yourself out there right like that, just make sure there are nudes that people want to see. Uh, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. You know, I'm not. I'm not here to judge. But you type in sudo apt install nginx. Dash y will probably help. But uh, when it when it asks you if you're sure, type in y. And now you have a functioning web server already. Now I can show you how to check. Uh, Nginx is very interesting. When you download it, it automatically starts for you, which is, I find that to be interesting, um, kind of weird actually, but let's run some Linux. Let's teach you some new Linux commands really quick so that you can see it, um, that it's running. So to confirm that it's running, I want you to type in uh, sudo. Actually, I don't even think we have to do that. Or do we type in service? nginx status i never remember so anyone else anyone who knows linux i'm from the older sysv days uh so i'm used to the etsy init.d stuff and i never remember the difference between i never remember the syntax between service or system CTL or system control. I never remember which one has the service first or which one has the action first. So I might mess it up 10 times, but like, I'll never get it right. I've already given up on trying to get it right over the years. Uh, but yeah, so let's try this. And when we hit it, if you hit service, Nginx status, I got it right first time, I guessed. That's nice. It says active running. We don't even have to start it up. As soon as you, as soon as you install it, it gets going and lets you know Nginx is a high performance web server and a reverse proxy server. Um, ah, yes, after typing command, um, what's prompted for password? So um, type put sudo at the beginning. So uh, that's the reason, just hit control C um, or type, well, there's no password. So hit control C, uh, put sudo at the beginning of this. That's why it's asking for a password. We should get Nginx page. Uh, if. Uh, at the NC2 instance address, you should, but we have not opened up the, that port yet. So we talked about, uh, we learned a little bit about, you know, the ports and security groups tonight. We need to do that. So now, uh, Nginx by default runs over hypertext transfer protocol, HTTP. We learned that in the slide about uh, how web servers work. That port that, uh, that, that, that runs over is port 80. So HTTP, the, the port of the web is port 80. Now, the real port of the web now is actually port 443. So a lot of you probably heard of something called HTTPS. And so when you go to a website, sometimes you'll see it at the front. So sometimes you'll see HTTP, like craigslist.com, uh, you see that here? HTTP right there, uh, that's the protocol. Um, so, but most things, like if even I go to HTTP, it'll actually move over to HTTPS, uh, which is, uh, it's eight, it's hypertext transfer protocol secure. And this is the real port of the web now, uh, because most browsers actually like Chrome, like requires it. Um, and so, uh, this requires your site to have uh, something called a TLS certificate. 
or SSL certificate for people who are familiar with that term, but SSL doesn't really exist anymore. Um, but there's a there's a there's basically a, a, an encryption key on the server that allows you the data to your server to be encrypted. So this actually runs over port 443. So those are the two ports of the web. HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, runs over port 80. Um, and then HTTPS is a uh, Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, and that runs over port 443. Those are two very important ports to know, uh, very important ports to know. So try to remember those, just write down 80 and 443. That's what you want. 80, 443. Hypertext transfer protocol sounds secure sounds back. Yes, it, it is basically backwards. Okay, so now uh, because this is now serving over the web, um, theoretically, all you'd have to do the same IP address that we typed in to get to log into the server, you could paste it up in the bar up here and get to your website or the DNS address, or like you could take either one of these and you could paste it in your, your web bar and you should be able to get to it. But we cannot get to this right now because of our security group. So we said there was that virtual firewall that sat out in front. Uh, the, the only rule Amazon gives you by default is, let's take a look at it. The only rule it gives you, and so to get to your, to get to your security group for your server, make sure you have your server selected up here and then scroll down a little bit on the right and look for security groups and click on this, click on, yours probably says launch wizard if you didn't give it a real name. It probably says launch wizard one or two or three. And down at the bottom, we'll see the rule that we were looking at before. And we'll see that SSH is the only protocol that was allowed here. Uh, so port 22 is the only one that's allowed incoming. We need to open up the port of the web. Uh, we need to open up uh, a different protocol. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click edit inbound rules. Uh, for this, you do not you do not need to make a new key. You need to make a new key if you need to log into a new server or you need to make a new server. How about mistake, close my command bar. Do I need to redo everything? No, you don't need to do everything to get back in. You just need to rerun the SSH command. So that SSH command you put together, if you actually go back in the command prompt and, and hit up, uh, on your keyboard, it probably will, sh like if you hit it enough times, it'll probably take you back to your command, uh, but you need to put that SSH key back together. Same key, just SSH dash I Ubuntu at your IP address. So try that out. Okay, so um, edit inbound rules. So we're gonna hit edit inbound rules and we're gonna add a rule. So we're gonna add a rule to allow you can click down this this bar and HTTP is actually in here. So you can either find the service on here, but every service is not listed here. So generally what you're gonna wanna do is important to know the port number because you just put it in here. So I'll put port range is 80 is the one that I wanna open up. And then I want, any, I want it's the, because it's the web, because it's a website, I want anyone to be able to access it. So I'm gonna open it up to everyone. So 0.0.0.0 slash .0 eight. So. This is gonna open up port 80 to everyone in the world. Now, you could also do port 443 if you wanted to. Uh, 443 requires an extra step on the web server uh, to actually work, but you could open it up right now if you wanted, um, but port 443 won't actually work until you set that up on the web server. Um, but yeah, you just port 80, 0 .0 .0 .0 slash 0. Great questions. If you choose 0 .0 .0 .0 slash 32, uh, only an IP address of 0.0.0.0, .0 will get access, which no one has, <clears throat> or at least I don't know who has that. I don't know how you could get that. I don't know what computer you could give that to, but yes. Oh, does it? Does, does slash 32 give it to everyone? Let me try it. Let's try it. Let's try it. Uh, well, that's interesting. Well, let's, let's actually do it this way first. We will go back and we'll try slash 32. I assume it will be no one. I assume it would be uh, like no one would have access, but we'll see. Networking is hard. So we'll save this rule. And now if I go back up here and I refresh the page, I get this welcome to Nginx page. So I already, I already now have a functioning web server. I'm serving data from my server out to the internet. So any of you could go to this IP address right now, or you can paste in your IP addresses 
and you can go here and you will be able, you will get to this page and this is uh this is actually a web page uh it's a, it's a it's a static web page that they give you as a part of the installation and you've now set up your own web server now we can put a site here in a second i'm gonna show you how to do that but like you've you now have a have a web server again all the web server is is a computer uh using some software to serve uh content uh or serve data over web protocols which is http and https can you just yes you can just add http under type yes the only reason uh, i did i don't do that is because there are other times when you need to add a rule um and that service is not under type um and so you need like it's just important to know the ports but yes you can just select http under type and it will automatically fill in the port how to dns so i can change my website uh <laughs> um yes to what's the mastermind.com uh so um that is with uh there's a couple of different ways to do that but real quick if you wanted to do it locally if you wanted to if you wanted to point your website i like that actually here we go watch this if you wanted to uh dns is kind of a bigger thing that we're not going to really dive into but you can um you can change the way that your dns routes locally on your machine uh by modifying something called your host file so not on the server make sure you're not in the server make sure you're on your own machine uh and there's a file called your host file um i don't know where it is in windows i don't know the location that is at windows uh, i'm assuming on mac it's in the same place but you can uh you can sudo vim or like you can edit whatever program you want to use to edit it's located i'm gonna use vim at etsy excuse me hosts so this is where it's located on i, I believe both mac and linux it's, it's right here and and in here i'm not gonna do it right now but uh in here you can basically i could put um my the ip address of my site so i could do like this url which is westonmastermind.com. And then I could put the IP address of my server right here. And then my computer and only my computer. Oh, Stan, oh yeah, Stan Mastermind, I like it, I like it. Oh, oh, westandmastermind.com, I like that. I do like westandmastermind.com a lot, actually. I struggle with that, reading is fundamental. Uh, first off, I think I would've got that right if I wasn't trying to read you guys' names all the time. Y'all have me struggling out here because your names are clever and then there's weird characters and also my font is small, but I appreciate that. But yes, you can put your uh, IP address in here and now we must purchase WeStandMastermind.com because uh, yeah, it'd be cool. And we could actually set it up. Maybe that's, you know what? Whoever's in the pipelines course, that might be the, that might be the URL for our company that, we, uh, that we're working for is WeStandMastermind.com. But you can set that up right here, but don't worry about that right now. That's that's extra tidbits for everyone. If anyone wants to dive into that, you can. But like we said, now you can get to, well, I don't know what that was, it was like a fly. Um, this is the website here. So with eight minutes left, let me show you something else cool. Head over to, and you don't need to do this right now. Maybe we'll add this as a, a homework assignment if you want to try this, but uh, HTML5 up. So these are just, uh, you don't need to follow, like you can follow along with this, but like this is like, I'm just showing you how some of this stuff works. Um, all this is, is a static file. It's serving an HTML file. So um, by default, it serves data out of the var www HTML folder. So I'll paste that in, but if you CD, so if you change directory into var www dot html folder so I'll, I'll just paste this command here and you can run this from anywhere on the server because it is a uh it is a what's that thing called it is a absolute url i'm not url or absolute path in here in this folder there is a index dot nginx dash debian html file let's take a look at this file whoops that's not what i meant to do all right so this is the structure of the web this is the the markup language html uh that allows you to uh 
structure how things look on an internet page. I know it might look crazy, but check it out. There's just words in here. So welcome to Nginx. If you see this page, the Nginx web server is successfully installed and working. All right, well, let's go here. Well, what did that say? Welcome to Nginx. If you see this page, the Nginx web server is successfully installed and working. So there we go. Like it, it's, it's, it's using this file to print this stuff out. So I could change this file. I could change it. And I could say, welcome to uh, the Thunder. Do oh, it's read only. Hold on. Uh, I could say, yeah, welcome to the Thunderdome. Welcome to the uh, Thunderdome. And I could save this. And we refresh it over here. And it changes. Uh, because um it's just serving the the that file it's just serving the markup that is in that file when you make a new request to it it's going to give you the updated information so the web is not crazy like like by default it's not super wild uh it's not super wild at all uh it's just it's just giving up some data and if i want to serve an image or something i just point to it and i could serve the image as well as long as it was local to here Oh, this sudo command is something that I also learned here from someone who's been learning Linux, who, who's used Linux for a long time. This is something someone taught me in the last DevOps course. Uh, but what this does is I ran this command right here to edit a file. Uh, you guys didn't see it, but it wouldn't let me save it because it was it was a read only file. So I needed to escalate my privileges to be able to edit that file. If you do sudo exclamation exclamation or sudo bang bang it will rerun the last command you ran so it reran this command with sudo prepended to it so it escalated the privileges of this command and just reran it and you can see down here that's exactly what it did it reran that command with sudo in the front so that is what it does the sudo bang bang and it allowed me to edit that file um you don't need to do this part uh but i would if you want to mess around with the web server uh, I recommend heading over to HTML5 up. Um, and maybe if you if you want to start your web development career, you know, you have a server right now that's running. Uh, it, it's conserve web content. If you want to grab a, a simple HTML theme, you can go to here. Um, and you can just grab one. So this one's purple and cool and uh, I can uh, right click and click copy link address on the free download. So right click, copy link address. And you might say, Aaron, you're on a server. How do I get those files to the server? So it's a zip file. Uh, and the way that you can get it are two ways. I actually don't think you have wget by default. Let's see. Uh, oh, you do. Okay, so the way that you get it is you type in wget. So if you wanna download something to your server from the, from the internet, you can do it like this. And so wget, and then paste in the web address and I'll download it right here. Oh, uh, actually, darn it, I forgot about how this works. So it actually needed, you'll need to add in this because HTML5 up uh, has like some security weirdness. Uh, you'll actually need to stick this in your command. So you actually need to paste this at the end. So I'll paste this if you wanna download this exact thing. So make sure you are in the var www.html folder and you can download that. So I will, uh, what do I do a vim part? You don't need to, you don't need to do the vim part. That was just me showing you that I could, uh, modify the file and show it. You can skip that part. Um, you can, you can skip that part. You can go straight to this part if you want. Uh, but if you already, if you already are in vim, if you already are in, hold on, sorry. If you already are in here, uh, to get out of it, uh, this is like the, the number one searched thing on stack overflow or, or like or or this this question has been searched pl plenty of times uh to get out of here um you hit colon type in q uh, actually so colon if if you made changes to the file which you probably didn't uh it's do wq if you want to save what's in there if you want to save what you changed but i don't think you say i don't think you did anything but to just get out just do colon q exclamation point um i apologize someone asked me this on twitter um and they they knew enough about vim to look below to look down here and they they, they were trying to figure out what i was doing i use shift zz to exit i don't actually do 
colon Q exclamation or colon WQ. So that made it even more confusing. So I apologize, but that is how you exit them is very confusing. But what this just did is this downloaded. Oh, uh, did it? Oh, what? I, I thought I did a sudo. Cannot write. Oh, my, my W get needs a sudo. Hold on. So sudo W get now I'll paste this for you. And so it's going to download a zip file. There's a zip file right here. It's called download. It is a zip file to unzip to unzip a down a, a zip file in Linux. You just type in unzip and and give it the command you want to unzip. I'll uh, give it the file you want to unzip unzip download. Oh, I might not have unzip. Do I have to sudo unzip it? Sudo unzip download. Okay, our first problem. We have a command that's not found. Now, I don't want to tell you to do this willy nilly, but right now I want to tell you to do it willy nilly. If a command ever doesn't work, try to install it. It says unzip command not found. So I'm going to do sudo apt install unzip. I know we're going fast, but it's not important. The important part was you understanding getting the web server installed. So we went slow on that part right now. You can rewatch this piece. I'm going to show you how to like grab a, a free template and install it here. Um, so we downloaded it using a W get and I can paste these instructions. And then all we're going to do is unzip download. Download. Or open download it. Oh, is it not a, it's a, it's a zip file. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm sorry. Does it take you to another page? Oh, no, no, that's right. I'm confused actually. Cannot find or open. Hold on, let me check something and then I'll tell you what to do if this is right. This is gonna be whack. Oh, 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 sudo. No? Hold on. Uh. Pretty sure it's a zip file. That spelled wrong. Uh, C man. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Ignore everything I just did. So here's the steps. Here's the steps that you want to do. Go to HTML5 uh, up.net. Grab, find, find one that you want. Right click the one that you want and click copy link address. Then take that URL and go in to your server and type in this command and replace replace my URL with your URL. So I copy this. I'll paste it in here. It will download it. Then once it downloaded, it, it's going to download it to this weird download file. It's, it's not going to be download.zip. It's going to be uh, it's going to be I'm going to move it back to what it was. So if anyone's following along on the video afterwards, you will be able to see this. It's going to be just this. It's going to be just this weird download file. And then you can unzip that. So sudo unzip download because I can't. Why isn't it auto? It's not auto filling for me. Okay, well, it worked. So it doesn't matter. All right, so downloads. And so when it unzips, it's going to open up a bunch of files. So index files, index.html is like the main file that um, Nginx is going to look for. Um, that web service look for is an index. It's called an index file. And so now if I refresh this page, it actually gives me the site that I just downloaded. So, um, so yeah, I have this this HTML site just that easy. I have a site set up and now it's just HTML and CSS. And so if you're trying to learn web development, now you have something to play around with. Now you can, you know, you can try to modify these files to see if you can get it to look the way that you want to look or, or whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, that's just a little bit extra. You can try some stuff out. I think it's fun to mess around with that. Once someone showed me how easy when I was first learning about web servers, how easy it was to host static websites. And nowadays there's so many free templates that it's uh, great. So yes, I know the last part was too fast. Definitely too fast. So steps again, actually, you know what I'm gonna do here? Watch this. Uh, we're gonna use notion really quick. Uh, we're gonna make a new page. Uh, what is this? Uh, install, uh, HTML site real quick. And then we'll be done and then we'll get out of here. Site two seconds code block. Um, 
CD. First thing I want you to do is CD slash var www HTML. The next command I want you to do is, uh, is well, not next command. It's first command I want you to do. Then I want you to go to HTML five up dot net and find a template. We're so close to being done. Find a template. I don't know why I, I caps lock that fat fingers. Um, right click download link and choose um, a copy link address. Uh, so then on the server, every time you see code, I want you to do it on the server. Uh, so then I want you to run that wget command. Um, HTTPS your actually, no, we'll leave that there. Um, run the following and replace, uh, uh, replace URL with your URL. And then, and then sudo unzip. to do unzip download. That is all you have to do. Um, oh, actually you have to install it first. So apt uh, sudo apt install uh, uh, unzip and, and there you go. Now you should just be able to copy and paste. Uh, I think this will do it. Um, I think this will do it. So share public access, copy page link. Okay, no, you actually don't need to do anything in Vim. Nothing in Vim at all. This is everything you need to do. After you have Nginx installed, all you have to do to set up your own site, if you wanna like try one of those templates out, is just run these exact commands. Copy and paste this, go here, choose a template, right click download link, uh, and choose copy link address. Then run this, but replace your, replace this with yours and then copy and paste this. <laughs> it ain't working, but it's cool. Hey, Craig, it worked. Excellent. What's the name of this app? Uh, it's not an app. This is just, uh, oh, this this exact site. Uh, this one is called, uh, wait, let me go back to what I pasted. This one's called Hyperspace is the one that I chose and it's on this page. Hyperspace is this one. It's on here somewhere. But we, I think we did it. Just choose whichever one works for you. Now, if you're like, man, I really still don't understand that. Hopefully you, you, hopefully you got to the point where you have a web server working or at the very least you understand uh, what a web server is and kind of how it works or at least like what it does. Um, and so now you, you, hopefully you know that it, you know, serves content over the web, the web meaning, high, you know, serving content over HTTP or HTTPS. We had a little fun with it today. Um, not necessarily important that you know how to set a web server up for the AWS exam, but uh, it, it helps for kind of understanding what you can do with the cloud and kind of what's going on. Um, oh, this app is called Notion. Notion, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Uh, Notion.so, I think. I believe that's the website, yep. It's pretty cool. I uh, usually have this in dark mode. I don't know why it's not in dark mode. I prefer dark mode, but there we go. I actually pay for Notion because it's like, it's really nice. Um, it's like, it's so good. Um, but yeah, there you go. And actually, can I change this to like a uh, bash? Uh, whack, the colors go away. I like colors, so I'll leave it on JavaScript because uh, it doesn't matter. But cool, that's it. That is, uh, that's everything. Again, uh, uh, less less heavy on the amount of information. We did some more stuff hands-on, so may have still felt uh, a little confusing, but hopefully, um, hopefully it, it it wasn't as overwhelming. I hope it didn't feel as overwhelming to me today. Um, but if you're still having trouble, again, reach out, ask questions, uh, you know, rewatch, rewatch the video. Uh, Google, maybe like, how do I install Nginx on Ubuntu? And maybe uh, there's another tutorial that would help you get through it easier or help you understand it in a different way. Watch another video. Um, but yeah, I hope, I hope you got something. Do I need to terminate my instance or just stop it until next class? Oh, great question. Yes, stop, let's stop your instances. When you're done, play around with it all you want. But if you're done with it, 
uh, head over to here if you want to save some of those hours for the month. Well, so if you don't plan on if you don't plan on spinning up any other instance, you probably don't need to. But I actually, do recommend it. When you're done uh, for the evening, done playing around, right click your instance, go down to instance state, and just stop it. That's all you need to do. Only thing that you need to do. And you see this here, and they give you a little thing here. Any data on your ephemeral storage of your instance will be lost. What should you be thinking? You should be thinking instance store. AWS instance stores uh, are that you did not. We we actually use EBS, uh, so don't don't sweat it. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, yes, so just go ahead and stop it. Your stuff will be there. All you need to do to come back and start it is do the same thing. Right click, instance state, start, and it'll start right up for you. So that'll save you your hours. It is not you are not charged. It doesn't count towards your hours while that instance is off. So. All right, that's it. That is that we, we we were 10 minutes over, but we um I think we got a lot done today. That's pretty dope. Um, Hopefully, like I said, hopefully you got a lot out of it. Um, If you're still struggling with some of the concepts, it's okay. Reach out, ask questions. Uh, th This information is going to be um the next concepts um are going to be building kind of off of off of EC2 instances themselves. You don't necessarily need to understand how they fully work, but uh, you need to kind of understand what they are. Um, and so we'll be talking about uh, scaling, auto scaling and load balancers on Wednesday. And it should be fun. Uh, tomorrow, if you are interested, if you're in Decoded, what are we doing tomorrow in Decoded? One second, the curriculums, Decoded. Uh, tomorrow in Decoded, we are doing uh, data types. Yes, data. This week we're doing data types, and data structures. So uh, be prepared for that. And in pipelines, what are we doing this weekend? You got time to learn about what we're doing in pipelines. But uh, well, I'll just give you a heads up. We're doing uh, like I don't know what we're doing actually. Uh, we're implementing um. Yes, we're implementing source and version control uh, development strategies. So we're gonna be talking about different uh, different Git workflows and different Git strategies and like how to take what we have um, kind of as a, just a generic system with you know nothing in a code base and like how to approach uh, you know, different ways of uh, of developing against it and allowing de like creating these pipelines for developers. Uh, we'll talk about some of the caveats between the different um, the different workflows and like what issues you might run into. So that should be pretty fun. But that's it. Excellent. That was a good trip. I, I, I had fun tonight. That was fun. I like to be take it a little bit easier. And I think what helped is we have the the LaCroix. I, I really don't know how to pronounce the it says curate, but I'm it's gotta be cura curate. Curate. It's gotta be it, right? La la croix curate is what we uh it's not that good, I'm gonna be honest with you. The apple cranberry is not that good. I mean, not a huge fan, to be honest, but we'll try We have another flavor, so we'll try the other one. Hey, Watson, thank you so much for the bits. Appreciate you guys sticking around. Ain't it crosses in French? I don't know. <laughs> I'm probably, I have no idea. Key lime is the best flavor. I will try it. Um, I have my flavors that I like. I'm pretty hit or miss with the flavors. I either love them or I don't dislike them a lot. This one's interesting because I don't hate it. Um, it's right in the middle for me. It's like, I, I wouldn't pick this because there are better flavors, but yeah. Pomegranate blueberry is amazing. All right, I, well, I gotta, I gotta try those. I gotta try those out. I gotta try those out, especially since LaCroix is loafing. They're not, uh, not getting back to us. We'll, we'll submit one more sponsorship thing for them. We, if, for all the new folks, we submitted a sponsorship on LaCroix, uh, a request for sponsorship on the LaCroix uh, uh, website. We wrote a, we wrote them up a nice little uh, a little page. Someone sent it to me. Uh, it was actually Blah Seven. I haven't seen Blah. If you're if you're lurking out there, man, we miss you. I miss you in the chat. But uh, there's a, there's a way to reach out for sponsorships for stuff, and uh, they did not respond. But cool. Who are we rating this evening? Who's on? Let's see. Who is in the science and tech channel? Ah, oh, that was whack. 
I hit the X. Mm, 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 mm. Night, everybody. Night, Just Machine. Night, uh, Boba T Cat. See, I remember it. Boba T. That's easy to remember. How far down the science and tech when you look at it? It's always like first for me. Um, I know light mode is gross. I know, I know. What time are we on tomorrow? Seven, seven p.m. Eastern time. Um, yeah, so uh, two and a half hours from two hour and a half hours ago from right now, whatever your time zone is. Ah, uh, whoops. We are, we already we already did see him already. Who haven't we done? I know the light theme is. I don't use the light theme. Prime's on. We may have a little prime. Uh. Just because I might do more work and I might watch. Uh, or is there. I'm trying to go to something that's not a. Uh, I don't know who CP Programmer is, but uh, it says it's in English as well. Let's head over to CP Programmer. Someone help with the Notion link again. Yeah, 105 has a lot. Yeah, he's a lot. Let's go. Uh, Portuguese. See, there's always like a lot of Portuguese streamers. Let's see. You're right. Let's do someone who's preferably English, but I guess I guess we could do. Mm. Let's head over to this person, Dusk125, starting on the GUI and talking about uh, Planets, they're making a game. Let's do that. Let's head over to Dusk125. I like it. So we're gonna all say hi. Let's see. Raid Dusk. And I gotta get I gotta get better at typing. Dusk125. That's the whole reason I built this keyboard and I didn't get any better. I got better for a while. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Let's head over. Let's make dusk dusk's day. Someone we say what's up. And uh I'll see you all later. Peace out. Have a good night.